they scored. It, it, it went twenty-one to eleven or something. Wait, 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 I think it went over in overtime. What was that? No, I, I thought it was over? 21 to 11 last year, and it was 2017 the year before, which I think barely stayed under, if I remember. I could yeah. be wrong, but I was looking back at, at my notes from. So what was the? Year. So it was. Uh, so what was the streak? You know what? Let me get it because I I, I wrote about it. It, it was this week. it was like forever. They just yeah. everything went under. The under. Oh. Yeah, Always. I th I yeah. think I mentioned, and I'll go get uh, I'll go get the uh, the sheet out in a moment, that they started regularly posting college totals, at least here in Las Vegas, around 2009. And I think from 2009 through 2022, every Army-Navy game stayed under. And it might have even been earlier than that, because I think back in 2000, from 6, 7, and 8, the games were also like in the low to mid-30s. And the Army-Navy game in the that when they started posting totals was always in the low to mid-40s. So even those three games, even though I don't have records of it, those probably were unders as well because they were like 20 to 17 and things like that. Let me go get that if I can. Wow. Well, that's kind of hard to believe, Jim, that uh, they haven't – Vegas, of all places, were they were not doing totals for college football until 2009? Well, if Andy says so, that must be true because wow. he follows that a lot closer than I do. Huh. Why do you think that is? Uh, the odds maker – well, a lot of the rules we have out here – come from the gaming commission which is a bunch of no oh no 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 nothing suits that make rules it's it's the same thing in, in washington and you know you put people in they don't know what the hell they're doing you got to remember too the now legalized gaming is around vegas is going to have to start to catch up because there's a lot of stuff that FanDuel and DraftKings are doing that we're not doing here and we're getting way behind in the creativity of how to book and the, the options to book the player props and things like that. We've got our head. We've got to get our head out of the our ass to keep up with them. So you're saying that like the online books are more creative when it comes oh, to all sorts way, of props. Way more creative. Way more. Wow. That that's shocking to hear that. Well, they don't, Vegas. they don't give they, they don't have a a Neanderthal gaming commission regulating them. Exactly what I was going to say. We are way behind the times here, and they can't. We can't blame it on systems or anything else that you might have had the uh, explanation about four or five years ago. Slow and catching up because the offshore places, the out of uh, out of uh, Nevada places, have had no problem in adapting it, and they just got things set up within the last four or five years. Well, it's it's a younger generation, you know. We got yeah, we got old, you know, stage fright leaders here that are worried about their jobs, and I mean, they're all appointed, and you know, it's all it. it well, bottom line is, you get corruption in anything, it's gonna it's gonna ruin it. I'm so proud that the NCAA or whoever makes the rules did not put Alabama in, yes, because of the because of the political pressure. I'm there so proud go. of them. That's the there first time go. I ever remember them doing something right. Greg, I don't talk. know. I, Greg, do I do I have you on my list for getting my newsletter or not? No. Okay, I thought I had put it on, but I'll make sure that I do. But because um, um, I know Jim gets it, um, and I think Mark as well, and I think Victor also. I think I put everybody. I don't know. It must have been I had a brain fart or something. But uh, I talked about it every Jim, year. Jim, I, would, I, Jim would say it's because you don't like me. <laughs> that would be as far from the truth as possible. But what? What? Why am I being picked on today? He called me old, and, that, and now he's. You know, I'm, in in five minutes, I've been I've been dissed twice. <laughs> oh, what? You said that well, to me like last week. I remember saying something like uh, Andy didn't do this or whatever, and you said well, that's probably because he doesn't like you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh gee, all this talk behind my back. I gotta, I gotta sort of like put mute and and camera on and listen to this for a little bit. Let me see if I can bring it up here because I do have the, um, uh, uh, the data. Oh, we should, that. we should, we should talk about that. I mean, Andy writes some really good uh, stuff. I, I, um, we for got years have talked it way before they started the playoff. I think it was back in the old BCS day. I remember there was a book. I forget who it was who put it out, but it's a, a noted football guy, maybe Jeff Passan or someone along those lines, put out a book called Death to the BCS. 
And this is probably around 2012 when they were starting to talk more about expanding and having a true national Good. champion. Good riddance. And I've been ranting about it because what I call it, uh, I, I, even the college football playoff, it's really an invitational. And I write a little bit about it this week because, yes, five spots are reserved for the four major conference champions and a group of five. But the other seven spots are by invitation only. And that's basically subjective. I, I, one of the things I said is they ought to follow what they do in the um, FCS where they have 24 teams, the teams uh, one through eight get buys, and the first round are, t are uh, nine through 24 to trim the field to 16. Eight of those uh, 16 teams are eliminated. That way you could open up, if they use a similar format, you could open it up to uh, 24 teams instead of just 12. So you'd be able to get more of those questionable two loss possible three loss teams in but you really wouldn't have much of an excuse if you're number 25 and didn't make it in the only problem is that that would extend the season because now you could end up playing 17 games let's say if one of the teams who's playing this the uh, first round has to win four games so they could be playing like a 17 game uh, schedule for example uh, so maybe they should also do away with the conference championship games and any revenue yes. loss any revenues lost from those conference championship games would be more than made up because in a field of 12, you have 11 playoff games. In a field of 24, you'd have 23 playoff games uh, because obviously everyone would lose except for the final team. And th th that's almost double the number of playoff games they'll have this year. And imagine what the TV revenues would be for those uh, additional games. Well, you could also get rid of one of those FCS uh, games that each team appoints under schedule and that'll shave off an additional regular season week that you could yeah. use for the postseason. Well, the, the only reservation I would have there is that's where a lot of these small schools get their funding. You know, Furman goes to play Alabama or something. Or like just give them a check nothing. anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just give them a check. Just, just, we're going to give you a check not to play. How about that? That'll work. Okay, yeah. Let me see here now where I have. It always comes down to money. Hey, we want to yeah. remind everybody. Every, everything is comes down to money. We want to remind everybody that we are broadcasting on ProLine TV, the ProLine TV channel. Mm -hmm. So if you have uh, yet to subscribe, uh, we, we, we would really advise and uh, hope that you would subscribe here. Uh, this is where most of our content is going to be from now on, including over at Playbook Experts uh, channel. Uh, of course, we're still... Uh, posting there. We will continue to post a playbook just like I continue to post on my channel, but the majority of all of our content uh, will be here at ProLine TV. So you don't want to miss it. So therefore subscribe and we appreciate the likes, the shares, uh, and also the comments. Comments are very important. Uh, the comments help the algorithms as far as YouTube and the more comments we get and more back and forth with the audience. YouTube likes that. And that'll, that'll help us get additional views as well. So we always welcome your comments and questions too. Uh, and we're going to get into some of those a little bit later on in the show. I want to add that, that the whole idea of, of what we're doing, and, and Greg is doing a tremendous job with the interviews and, and all the shows that we're doing in the podcast, is to bring the best sports gaming information to the public. And I think I think for the fact that we've only been doing this for like a month, I think we're doing tremendous. And well, even my, I don't know if even, you guys... my, even my dog approves. You can hear him in the background. <laughs> I don't know if you guys. So I've got to say this, though. When you pick the Bears to beat the Niners like I did last week. Uh, I warned you. You. See, you. you see the TV behind me? Uh, yeah, it was off. so bad they shut my television off. Yeah. Because I, I had the Bears. It I was noticed funny. that it was blank on the TV set there. <laughs> yes. It was funny because remember when we were talking oh. about that and we, we, we were going over a couple of games and remember oh you God. said, you, you made your comment, you go, well, I trust the Bears more. And I remember saying, and we were laughing at it because remember, did you hear what you just said? <laughs> uh, you know, I, it, it's like, like, you know, sometimes you don't, you don't bet on a team, you bet against the other team. And I thought the yep, Niners yeah. were done I mean, yeah. they, with all the injuries and everything. And, and a new coach well, for the I Bears. You, I, was, I was wrong. And, and the, the Bears, Bears you, you thought they'd rally around the new coach. Well, yeah. yeah, and they had they had come close a couple times and made some stupid mistakes and fired the coach. And you know, but I, you know, sometimes you're wrong and then you lose your television. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for I the pay. Bears. 
I'm looking for the Bears to do it this Monday night, getting the seven at Minnesota. So I may fall victim then. My my bad uh, decision last week uh, was uh, my enthusiasm and love and wagering upon the Arizona Cardinals. Well, uh, and yes. you know, a lot of people, a lot of people went down with the Bears and the Cardinals. Yeah, because there's a lot of money. As you, I mean, you track it very well. Yeah, you know that money came in, and but you know one thing. They've been backing the Jets all year long, and finally they covered a spread. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I happened to lay five and a half on that game <laughs> oh. in week and got there. Uh. But for the most part, it was six and even six and a half at a lot of shops when it closed. Because there is a lot of money that comes in, in the last 45 minutes uh, to an hour before uh, the game time. How about so the what g- happens now? They're favored at Jacksonville. Watch Jacksonville pull the upset oh. this week. How about, how about the guy that bet $3.1 million? Oh, yeah. Oh, At least get a sweat. Yeah. Oh my, my! If that kid Especially catches the, the ball, he, he loses that whole. I mean, it's yeah. amazing, and he should have caught the ball. Yeah. Well let, well, let me ask you guys something then. All right, if you have three million dollars to wager, <laughs> is and and you just said it, Jim. You said uh, just imagine how he felt at that time. But I have to believe that the, the way he felt is the same way I would feel if I bet. If I had five hundred dollars on the game, well, we don't know the man. We don't know the man's circumstances. We don't, but we would have to. I mean, he he might be Elon Musk, and three million dollars is like you know, yeah, a penny. Yeah. Yes. So we don't know the guy. I mean, I don't know. Or he could have three point five million in his bank, and he was wagering three point one of it. Then, then he's a fool. Yes. (laughs) And lucky, lucky fool. you might remember, Jim, was it Bob Stupak who wagered two point something million dollars with Gene oh, Mayday yeah. back? Was that the I think it was the 49 it was either 49ers Bengals or 49ers Chargers, which was a larger point spread. But I remember that from you know 25 or so years ago that uh, uh, that was uh, that the one that drew all the attention here in Vegas for quite some time. Yeah, but Andy, there's something about that. I don't know that if you know this. That may never have really been real. That might oh. have been a publicity stunt. And that wouldn't quite, surprise me. Quite, quite frankly, I believe it was. I don't think the bet was ever meant to be paid. It was between two individuals that were looking for publicity. And that's what I've heard a yeah. million times. I have no evidence of it. But but from what I've heard, I believe it. It's still a good story, even if it's not true. It's a great it's a great story. <laughs> but I cer- and he certainly both got publicity. Just like, what was it the year? I think it was... Uh, uh, the Redskins, and I forget who they played in the game. Maybe it was Buffalo, and uh, I think it was the Gold Coast maybe who had the minus six and a half each way when the line was seven, and the game had a chance for a while before that that game was going to land on seven. You could lay six and a half on either side. That's right. You're right. Speaking yeah. of Bills, uh, that was uh, the one that hurt me the most last week. So that was probably oh. my my painful play of the week. Uh, though uh, the Bills game itself, uh, I should have I should have been smart enough like Vic and Tony because we talked on the show uh, last week as we do every week and we give our high five 60 second picks of the week and Vic had the Bills over 26 and a half and Tony had the Bills and the Rams uh, total of 40 over 49 and a half so they they were way over. Uh, so they hit that. And and by the way, Andy, you had Boise State minus three and a half and Jim at Carolina plus 13 and a half. So uh, th- the show, you guys, the handicappers went four for four on the high five picks last week. So great job. And also great job uh, on the teaser play of the week. We've oh, been- that was that was amazing. Yeah. We've that been was amazing. Teasers. Uh, we had a, a viewer uh, who wanted us to give out the teasers. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I believe, let's see, I think I have his name here. I think it's Randy uh, Poss was the one. Randy Poss, 6281. He wanted us to give out teasers. He loves them. So we started to give them out. And uh, last week, Jim and Andy started to kind of get into this. And I, Minnesota was the first one because we our game of the week last week was Minnesota-Atlanta. Yeah. So you guys started touched it, touched up on the fact that, hey, that would be a good teaser, Minnesota. And then you guys went on and said, well, what about Miami and Pittsburgh and Tampa? So Jim and Andy had Miami, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, and Tampa. And then Tony and Victor came in and said, well, what about the L.A. Rams? And what about Seattle? <laughs> yeah. So that, those are six teasers that were all right, six for six. And Jim actually put a bet on that and made a few bucks. Nice. Oh, I did a lot. 
And I'm going to I'm going to give you one right now. And I want to see we'll discuss it right here and see if you if you agree with this. This is a teaser. It's it's wild. And you can round rob. You can do it like in you don't have to do it one teaser. You can do one teaser, but you can do combinations and what they call like a round robin. OK. OK. Teaser. Yeah, like, like, like like three teams. You could do a a three team round or, robin, which would produce three teasers. Four teams would produce 10, et cetera. Right. You can actually do it like. Five teams and just, yeah. I mean, I got a lot of, listen to this. And you got, you're going to think I'm crazy. Well, I am crazy. Well, yeah, but, we already you know, know that. They, that's why they turned my television off. Yeah. Okay. Washington. Get it back. Wash, I, I hope. Cleveland. Miami. Well, okay, Washington. Yeah. Cleveland, Miami. Cleveland, Jacksonville. Miami. Jacksonville. Tennessee. Tennessee. Pittsburgh. Tampa, Buffalo, and Seattle, all in the teaser. Now, I'm not, you could play the whole thing. That's a lot of games. Some books won't even take that many, but you could round robin that into like four or five team teasers. Yeah. So, so, so explain, teasers. explain how that works. Well, Andy's the better math guy amongst us here. Go so ahead, he, Andy. I think he can explain it better. Okay, if you're talking about a round robin, that basically means, let's say a round robin, well, you could do twos, threes, and fours. It gets a little bit more complicated. If the well, he's got goes. nine teams he just yeah. gave. So so, let's, okay, let's... so if you did every possible two-team combination, so that every teaser was a two-team teaser, but all nine teams were used in every possible combination, okay. that would be 45, I believe it's 45 total teasers. Individual how teams. did you how did you get to that? How did you get it, to that it, so quickly? You take the number of teams, uh, which is nine, you multiply that by the next number, ten, so that'd be ninety, and you divide the result by two. All right, my head hurts already. <laughs> okay, now what happens if you want to do like a five team round robin? That With would be five. Oh, you mean do it? Do a five-team teaser using all the combinations? Oh, my, uh, every combination of five yeah. teams. How, wow! How would you do okay. that? Oh, another. Oh, you're just okay. In other words, you're eliminating four teams, or no, no, you're oh, using okay. all nine teams, but you're doing right. every combination to have five teams. Oh, that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, I, you mean I don't you have actually need a computer, Andy? Yeah, yeah. No, well, I, that's I, what we. Yeah. That's what we hit last week. Yeah, so, because like crazy. like a two two, th you, you see it a lot in the, the horse racing. They probably have the formula there because uh, they very often you say you know like wheel the six or you do you know all yeah. possible combinations win in place or you know exact as you know back and forth or quinellas, uh, but that's more like just a straight round robin. Often you will do um, in in sports betting you may do give me all combinations of twos threes and fours. There would be um, one four team. A combination would be a parlay or a teaser. Uh, there would be, I think, it's six combinations of uh, using uh, three teams, I believe, uh, or maybe it's four teams on that one. And then I think it's three combinations of uh, three teams. All right. Well, that's. Good I mean, I may be wrong on that, but uh, I'm not looking. I'm not visualizing it correctly. But, I guess I'd have to, as soon as Jim gets back here, I guess he's uh, having his usual little, sometimes I think when he does that, he's on his phone and people are calling him yeah. and it interrupts well, either, his signal. Either that, I was going to say, either that or the TV went on and he left the remote across the room. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. If anybody has, I know there's a way to fix your phone. So when you're on the phone and somebody calls you that it won't interrupt you. I don't know. Do you know how to do that, Andy, with your phone? Say that again now. If, if so, because Jim, was that the reason that you just got cut off again? Somebody was calling it, you. It, it, well, I'm getting these spam calls. Oh, so they're they're not. I you know, and every time I do them, I block them. But there's always more of yeah. them. So I don't. But know we have to figure them. out why, how to make sure that even when you're on the phone, that a call comes in, it won't interrupt your signal. How do That's I what do we've that? Figure out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anybody out there know. that's watching, we have to figure that out. I'm sure it's a simple uh, you know, I keep, setting I, on the phone. I've blocked six calls today already, but there's always a new one. Yeah, I, I know. There's always like 001, 002, 00, you know, I get it. All right, so but so how much, give me a general ballpark then uh, with, with how much you can make off of this, Jim. 
Oh, you could make a fortune if it hit. So like last week, how many teams did we have? Six, seven? Five. I, had, I, I played five. five. So you played five of them. So and how I, much can you make? Uh, like, what do you do? You put like a certain amount of money on each and you divide it by the number, right? So, well, um, I made I well the way I did it last week. I made one. I didn't do all this combination stuff this last week. Okay, but I, one, five. I did one five team. I did one five team teaser, which I think was like five or six to one. Five or six to oh, one. Okay, okay. Yeah. right. I, so I, I know put, that I, some places here. By the way, you should always for people who have the parlay cards and everything. It's always better. Well, check the numbers on the cards versus what's off the board. But the payoffs are generally better doing it off the boards. Yeah, I, I, bet five, I bet five hundred dollars on the five team teaser made like I think it was like I think it was three thirty three hundred back at the one book that I did it at. So what do you mean, Andy? Pretty... Well, oh, you mean with the parlay cards? Yeah, or the teaser cards? Yes. Well, they they have them like at every casino, and they got a whole bunch okay. of different kinds, half points and all that. But versus betting off the board, like you would like, let's say making a straight bet. You can, you can make a parlay off the board or a teaser off the board of multiple teams, but check the lines because generally if you do it off the board, meaning the current price, because remember these parlay cards are okay. printed in advance, you may Got very it. often get better prices by okay. playing them off the board and better payoffs as well. For example, okay. um, Oh, I feel, you know, and I, and I think Jim, I don't know if you, if you, if you ever bet in the casinos or on local apps here, but they've done a lot of things now on these parlays. They used to pay like six to one. I think it was on a three teamer. It's now like 5.98 to one because they actually do the math of what you lay. And it's not the, the old um, 13 to five or six to one or whatever it was. They actually multiply like minus 110 times minus 110 times minus 110 uh, to get the payoffs there. So, you know, and those few pennies that you give up makes up a lot of money for the revenue they take yeah, in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, these casinos really need the money too. We yeah. re really should do a GoFundMe for them. Yeah, uh, we we could game. do a whole we could do a whole show by the way on some of the things. <laughs> you know, it, I, we may have touched upon it briefly that you now in a lot of these casinos, especially on the trip, you have to pay for parking. Okay. Oh, and that that makes me sick. That's terrible. It's, it's like pay saying, for right? parking. Yes. 40, now forty we, bucks. We, you go, you drive yeah. to the strip to go to dinner. You pay forty dollars to park right. your car. It's basically like saying, oh, so now I have to pay for the privilege of losing my money. <laughs> I mean, that's wow. That's basically what it is. Oh, it's, okay. It's it, it's, that's why, that's it's why I like a lot of the local casinos that don't charge for any of that. But that, we're really that's one of the re You know, one of the reasons I don't go to the Strip, because it, it annoys me so much that yeah. they're doing that. Well, not only that, the uh, people who get hurt in the strips are the independent people who contract out for the restaurants there. And it discourages locals from going to those restaurants because they have to pay for parking because not all these restaurants, some may, uh, will reimburse you for parking. But the, the casinos, you know, hey, why be creative and come up with something new to uh, draw people into our casino? Uh, we'll just charge for parking. Well, that'll take care of it. They, care, they, definitely, they definitely should give an allowance to locals. Local, absolutely. Okay. Because Some I do. mean, oh, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, locals, you want, lo they don't want local business. They, yeah. but the restaurants would, because who's going to eat, who else is going to eat there on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays when everybody's <laughs> working out of town before coming into Vegas. I mean, I used to think in the past, I used to hear, well, we're going to give you a free room because we know that you're going to spend money and we're going to take your money. So we'll give you yeah. either a free room or a discounted room. Now what you're saying is they're doing the exact opposite. Oh, they're doing, yeah, it's totally a different, it's all corporate. They want to make money. They want to, every division of the companies now want to be profit centers where in the old days they would give up money in a lot of this profit center yeah. or in the operations like in the order buffets. to make it back on the tables. They don't do that anymore. Terrible. Well, that's because it's, that's because it's all court. that's why that's why I, I like a place here like South Point because that's still basically privately owned by the Gons. Ex and exactly. They don't have parking fees there. They offer a lot of nope. different things there. They still have a, a lot of good restaurants, etc. But a lot of these one, ones that are run by corporations, Jim, you're exactly right. They're all run by mm -hmm. you know MBAs and uh, uh, what's important are uh, the, the profits as opposed to uh, I mean. You go to South Point or some places like that that are still old fashioned to a certain extent. They recognize you. Would you like a cop for lunch or something? Now you got to earn points and everything, which I understand, but it's a totally different atmosphere than it was. I go to I go to the ago. Red Rock a lot. Yep, which is excellent 
great restaurants, nice facility, oh, yeah. never charge for parking. Never. No. No, I don't I don't think they charge at all for parking there. Anybody. I don't think the, I mean I always I don't, valid- I don't I don't think any of the station oh, places geez. do. Yeah. We have to figure Jim's phone out. Maybe before he even uh, we end the show today. Okay, so I tell you what. Before Jim gets back, I was going to ask you guys this because uh, you already gave me your 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 bad play of the week, Andy. And uh, oh, and and regarding that Arizona Seattle game, once again, uh, I don't know how many times I bring this up, but once again, uh, when you have a team like Seattle uh, who was riding a six game series win streak, they had mm-hmm. just beaten Arizona a few weeks ago, and then. They're the dog in the game. I don't know how many times I keep talking about situations like this. Just go with the disrespected team, and the disrespected team comes out on top. Yeah. Uh, it just happens a lot, a lot, and it doesn't um, happen all the time. And this was one of the times that it that it that it continued. I I don't regret the play because I was disappointed because the fundamentals that were there. But it does make me wonder about Arizona the rest of the way. You know, it's the effect after the game because we'll see what happens. For example, this week with Arizona yeah, in a winnable game now. against New yeah. against New England, that was the important game because now they lose out on tiebreakers and uh, you know they still have to uh, worry about games against the Rams and the 49ers in rematches, even though they won the first two. How about a disrespected team in Seattle? I mean, here's a team that's, that's leading the division, talking, yeah. and there are three point. Well, I I missed part of it because I got knocked yeah. off again. Right, but they're a three point underdog. Yeah, I mean, again, I mean, they've won four straight since the bye as dogs, and now they're a home dog. Yeah, uh, they are being disrespected again. Well, the, the let me br- bring this up. There's a lot of different services that give out weather predictions. There's a possibility of really high wind in the Seattle game. Now, it's a, there's also the other, if you look at the other side of it, there's other predictive services that say there's no wind. I don't know what's going to happen at game time, but that stadium, if they get the wind, it's going to be very difficult to throw the ball. I don't know. I have It's still too fi- too early. It's five days ahead of the game. Now, by the way, that's another interesting situation because, once again, Seattle is a home underdog, albeit this time to Green Bay. It's a small one, but, uh, you know, the the teams are somewhat – I think Green Bay does have overall the better running game, so that might be a factor there. But uh, I would not be surprised if Seattle pulls this one. The only thing is – and it sort of applied to the Arizona game – is Green Bay is coming off that uh, that loss to Detroit. So – um, you know, they're, they're, they are pretty much assured of a playoff spot, yeah, but certainly a win here, yeah. especially against the Seattle team with whom they might be competing for a playoff spot if, say, the Rams or the 49ers end up winning the division. Unlikely, but still possible. Yeah, I didn't notice uh, anything. I just checked myself. I did notice a lot of rain. Uh, big surprise. Uh, four out of the next five days in Seattle, uh, right around, you know, Sunday, the weekend, Monday, Tuesday, have rain in the forecast. Uh, I don't see a lot of wind. I see their wind possibilities, like you said, Jim. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And by uh, the way, they they are playing the Sunday night game, so that Sunday night game. Like, I think I think the service out. that's I yeah. think the service that's predicting high winds is called AccuWeather. There's oh, okay. uh, there's like four or five of them that predict this stuff, and I mean you can even get the European version of it, and and but but AccuWeather is predicting very high winds. I have no okay. idea. If they're right, no yeah, the problem uh, with the European version is then you gotta uh, you know convert Celsius into uh, Fahrenheit and uh, you, gotta you might have to learn another language. I mean, yeah. who knows? Yeah, you know. All right, so <laughs> we've already got we've already been over the worst of the week from uh, we got at Arizona and Chicago. So Andy, uh, what was your favorite game? Your favorite pick? Something that uh, you were very happy about last week for whatever reason. Well, I, I did very well in those conference championship games, and the one that I enjoyed the most was Arizona State. Um, oh, yeah. Boy, you know, are they still yeah. hot, huh? Oh, they still Ooh. are. They're, they're 40 to 1, 50 to 1, I think I saw in some places, to win the conference championship. And, you know, to people who say it can't happen, look at TCU. Oh, you mean before ago. the season began? 
No, no, I'm talking about now they were like uh, 400 to one at I think before the. Oh, season. you're talking oh, about the national, the national championship. National title, okay. yeah, yeah. They were still long odds to win the Pac-12, or the uh, Big 12, because they were actually picked to finish last. But you know, even after this weekend, they were 40 to one. They were not the longest shot on the board now, but they were still 40 to one, and I think I saw they have a 50 to one to win the national title. And then you go back a couple of years, you had TCU make it to the uh, final game uh, against. Uh, Georgia, where they got blown out. Even That's though I, true. I think they let seven nothing early in that game, and then it was all because uh, I think they had the first possession or something. But uh, uh, well, then, it, yeah. then it was all Georgia. Uh, but I give this team, uh, you know, a, a shot. Now they would have to go through Oregon after they get through their first game, which could be a little bit difficult. But Oregon's <laughs> yeah. shown some some vulnerabilities. No, they don't. Uh, they play. Um, let's see, Arizona State. They play the win. Uh, they play the winner of uh, it's Ohio Clemson State and Texas. Texas. Oh, Clemson and Texas. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm not going to automatically assume it's Texas, by the way. Oh, no. I, I'm telling you right now, I'm picking Arizona State. Oh, no, no. Clemson. I'm talking about a, a Clemson, Texas game. Yeah. Clemson's I'm, got, oh, Clemson. I don't care. I'm just saying, if I had to make a prediction right now, Here's my free getting pick. to the semis, I would take Texas. Yeah, I can I see can that say, happening. Yeah. So I'm going Arizona State in the semis. You know, I could have so almost made a case. Play. I could have almost have made a case for Texas not being in the field. We, we knew they were going to. Because remember, they lost. Who did they play outside the of Georgia schedule this schedule was weak. The only team that – the only noticeable or noted team that they played and, and defeated was actually Texas A&M in, at the end. And I think A&M turned out to be an 8-4 and four team. And, and Michigan. And, That's it. And look and what Michigan they turned was, out to do. Michigan was 5-7. and seven. So yeah. Texas really didn't beat anyone of note. And, again, they had the lead against uh, uh, you know Georgia. They couldn't hold it. Did make for a good halftime bet where I think Georgia was plus three. And uh, got, I got involved in that with the low scoring game. But uh, uh, t Texas is vulnerable. And, you know, Dabo Sweeney, once again, wins an ACC championship game. Uh, it was a weird game. But on the other end, you got to be a little concerned how they let SMU come back. But SMU, I think, can put up a fight against Penn State. I don't know about that, but I see what you're saying. Maybe early, it's a little tough. Yeah. Uh, but Penn State, I was, look, it's really hard for me to get behind them because I'm just like, say Mark and uh, anybody else who is really down and how can you not be Penn state fans are down on James Franklin. Uh, yeah. He's just such a bad big game coach. Uh, but uh, the fact is, is again, I've been saying this all season is that this season, this team just has reacted differently. Now they haven't beaten either of the teams that they're supposed to beat again, Owen to Ohio state, Oregon, but if we, I mean, look at the Oregon game and how they easily could have just, they, they went down big. They could, it could have turned into a 55 to 15 game and they made it close, this close. They came this close to actually coming all the way back and winning that football game. And that shows a lot of heart. It, it, this is his best team. That's why I say it's not his yeah. most talented team. It's his best team. They play together well. I like the quarterback. I know he's not ready for the NFL yet, but he makes a bad play and he comes back and he rallies his team. And I love that in a quarterback and they're a talented football team. So yeah, I think it's going to be hard for SMU, but I, I think that, and I know Mark was high on uh, backing Georgia because I kind of slammed Georgia on my college football reaction video and Mark defended Georgia and I understand exactly where Mark was coming from because he said, well, the bottom line is, you know, you beat, you, you do whatever you have to do to win the games. And that's what they're doing. Beating Georgia Tech, going to overtime, they beat them. Beating unlike Texas, James, unlike James Franklin, Kirby Smart's been a very good big game coach. Yes. And so I completely get that. Matter of fact, I probably should have even worded it differently with the way I did with Georgia. What I don't think, though, is, is that just talent-wise when it comes to Okay, who do you like? Georgia, Oregon, Georgia, Penn State, Georgia, Notre Dame. I, I just, I'm sorry, I just don't like Georgia. And I went over this uh, about a month ago when I put that video out, and I, I outlined all of the, all of their games this season, in which they were outplayed, and, and, and yeah. this is just not last year's Georgia team that I think some people, not Mark, but some people they're, just they're got the in their heads. They're the, they're the Kansas City Chiefs of college football this year. In the regular season, yes. Yep. That's a, now, can they keep that up in the postseason? I don't think so because now they're going to start playing good teams every time they play. And they just, I just can't see them keeping that up. I just can't. And we don't so, know about Beck. And we don't no, know. How about will he Beck. be? That's true. Absolutely. Speaking Although of they quarterbacks. Do have, they do have several weeks off, of course. That'll help. And speaking of quarterbacks that might be hurt, you just talked about Texas. I don't think there's any question. You was something's wrong with him. Yeah. And I think something's been wrong with his shoulder most of the season, which makes you want, 
like confused as to why he's not giving Arch Manning more of an opportunity to play. That's what I don't understand. You watch Ewers throw the football and you can see that he's got no fastball. There's yeah. something wrong with his arm. And I don't get that kind of coaching, but that's also why I've never been the biggest Steve Sarkeesian fan. You know, I think he's a great recruiter. I'm not so sold on him as a game day coach, but um, that will be a very interesting first game uh, against the Clemson team that, by the way, is very talented. That Clemson team has got a lot of blue chip players, a lot of NFL talented players, but they just weren't putting it together this year. They were always like a step off here and there. But that last game against South Carolina, they, they started to come maybe really close to being the team that they thought they were going to be. And then they had to the turn over late. Maybe they're just hitting their stride at the right time. I'm also wondering about the Texas situation and how Sarkeesian handles the quarterback situation if Arch Manning might not rethink his decision to come back next year, either transfer or go to the NFL. Well, if Quinn I mean, goes to the NFL. Is, oh, yeah, no, but I'm saying about Arch Manning, maybe he could go to the NFL as well or transfer out because I think he's got to be stewing a little bit about this situation. I mean, it's not the first game that you has shown the tendencies you just talked about. And, you know, especially when you're in a close game, um, he's got, you he know, made he's this decision. Yeah. Wasn't it strange that he made this decision or everybody was wondering, why did you choose Texas when they've got Quinn Ewers there? It made no sense. And you figured, well, maybe he'll be there a year and he'll transfer, or maybe there's another reason, but he stuck it out and he still, yeah. so you would figure at this point now, Quinn's going to graduate. Now the team's going to be yours next year. I would, I, you know, so unless, like you said, unless something's happened with his relationship over Sarkeesian over the last year or so, maybe that could happen. But uh, well, I, also, I think we all love think, to see him play. Yeah. I think he also expected probably to be at least splitting some more time with the this year, even without the Ewers injury. And maybe, you know, maybe he was told things that didn't materialize. This is all speculation. I have nothing to, yeah. to go on, but I'm just thinking from the, you know, here's a kid who's going to be, Probably the number one quarterback drafted in his in his draft class. Okay, uh, barring any un unforeseen uh, negatives. Is that Arch? Uh, Arch, yeah. When, when he comes, comes out, yeah. Whenever, if he whenever comes out it is. next year, it's possible. Sure. Uh, if he came out this year, he might be. Who knows? I mean, number one quarterback. Uh, who knows? Draft. Because this but, is not a very good draft class. Yes. Yeah, but I, that's the thing. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if one of these power teams, maybe a Georgia, would uh, make an offer. Maybe an LSU could come calling. You know, Archie, of course, his, his grandfather, Archie, had a great uh, career uh, down in, uh, uh, in in New Orleans. Uh, after, well, Texas uh, yeah, has the money, though. You would yeah. think that they'd be able to pay him whatever they want. Whatever yeah, but it may, not, it may not be all that much. It may be largely money, or partially money related, but I think just playing time and, you know, maybe showing a little bit of he felt he might have been disrespected by not getting more no, of an we'll opportunity see. after deciding, you know, to, to come back this year. It'll be an interesting situation. Maybe he'll get an opportunity, if not against Clemson, then one, in one of the later games. But uh, I would not be totally shocked that if we've seen basically the last of him, other than in perhaps mop-up time with Texas ahead or, or far behind, uh, that we don't yeah, see those him days playing for over. Texas next year. Yeah. Uh, next week, of course, when we get the whole team back, and Mark, of course, is off this week because he's putting the bowl newsletter together. Uh, so we'll have him next week, next next Wednesday. So so since we have a couple of guys out, next week is the week that we'll do our uh, our playoff predictions. We'll go over you know the futures. We'll, we'll, everybody will give their input on who they like, upsets, things of that nature. And, so, and, by, um, and by the way, next week will be just a few days before the first round with those four games that have already had yep. lines out and analysis. So it'll be very, very timely next Wednesday. And uh, there is a big game this week, Army and Navy. Yep. Uh, Jim has been around for about uh, – No, I did not play in the game. <laughs> no. So Jim has seen quite a, quite a number of these matchups. Uh, and Army is a six-point favorite. I actually was a little bit surprised that the line would be a little bit better. Uh, because I just don't think there's much of a difference. I mean, I, I don't think there's a, a, a you know, a, a, these two teams have had very good seasons, but I don't think uh, you can compare them uh, as as easily as you would want to because they're service academies and having good seasons. Army has just had the much better year, uh, and they've got a quarterback that's had just a dynamic season. Um, so I know. Well, remember, Navy finished eight and three, and they were unbeaten until they ran into Notre Dame. So eight and three is a pretty good season. Yeah, uh, not as good as Army, but still no. a very good season. It shows. And by the way, I heard the uh, quarterback Harvath uh, will be back for this game. 
Maybe well, that's good. A feud week, yeah. And that has definitely been a big issue, is that even in games that uh, he was playing uh, before he uh, missed time, he was hurt. And he is, anytime you run that offense, the triple option, your quarterback is everything. So uh, that would be big to get him back. But still, I know six points could seem like a, a big number in a rivalry like this, uh, but I have to go with Army. Navy is about a two-to-one money line, which is enticing. But like I said, I mean, Army was awfully good last week against Tulane, and Tulane is a quality uh, a program, and uh, I, I just think Army's smoking right now. I, I like uh, it under. Well, well, I'll go ahead, Jim. I like it under. Yeah. What's the I, under? What, what do we got there, Andy? As I think, far as the history I think of the I under? Want to, I want to see it open 48 and a half. Or I'm sorry, 40 and a half. And I think it's down to 38 and a half now. Uh, well, it's talking about, uh, well, I don't know if you had started the recording uh, at that point. Yeah. But we, a little we bit. We were talking yeah. about it before. Army, uh, this game, uh, I mentioned that in 2000, 2009 was the first year that we really had consistent and widespread totals available on college games. Hard to believe it was not further back than that. But in any event, they started posting totals in 2009. And from every year between 2009 and 2021, uh, which I think is 13 straight years, the game stayed under the total. By the way, games don't go under the total. They start under and they stay under until or unless they go over. Having said that, correcting the yourself, three, the three <laughs> years, the three years before 2009, they were low scoring games, even though there weren't at least totals in Vegas, at least not widespread. So that could easily have been a 16 uh, games streak going into uh, 2022. And I think, Jim, you were correct. It wasn't it was it was two years ago that we had the over the game right. was uh, the total, uh, which had been in the mid 30s. In fact, I'll just go back to 2015. Total of 51, they scored 38. Total of 47, they scored 38. Total of 45, they scored 27. In 2018, total of 39, they scored 27. 42, the next year, they scored 38. 2020, 36, they ended up scoring 15. 2021, the total was now down to 35 and a half. They scored 30. And in uh, 2022, the total actually closed at 32, and the final score, I think that was the overtime game, 20 to 17. So it barely went over. And then last year, the total closed at the 28, and it was a 17-11 game. So uh, that actually pushed the closing total. Uh, this year, uh, we've seen the uh, – in fact, it opened at 40 and a half at the Westgate here uh, on Sunday, and I think by midweek, it's now down to uh, 38, 38 and a half. Uh, but if you look back over the uh, – years uh it's been a very competitive game in fact uh i want to say that uh, i think seven of the last 10 years the game has been decided by seven points or less and only once has the game been decided by exactly seven points so even at this line getting plus six or pl pl getting plus seven uh you would have won all but one one of those seven games uh that were one score games and you would have pushed the uh uh, the other. What I like, what the things, one of the things I'm considering here, or several of the things I'm considering here is uh, Army has been playing every week for a long time. So they don't have that traditional week off between the end of the regular season and the uh, and the Army Navy game. And this year, because the season started a little earlier, they also didn't have a bye week between uh, the game before the uh, Navy game and the, uh, their final regular season game as well. So they're, they're it's not uncommon in past years for there to be a two to three week uh, lag between the end of the regular season. Uh, so Navy hasn't played, I think, I want to say it was either since the 16th or the 23rd of uh, November. I think it may have been the 23rd where Army's been playing consistently, including last week's game uh, against Tulane, which, by the way, was another one that I really liked last week. I did not have Army on the money line. I considered it, but I eagerly took the points there. Uh, well, Navy's won played uh, one game since November 16th. Yeah. That's so it. That would have been, been the 23rd. So they by the way, all... keep... no, that was the 16th. And keep oh, in okay. mind, uh, comparison's sake, no. Navy – uh, lost to Tulane on November 16th, yeah. 35 to nothing. Yeah. Uh, and army just, uh, crapped all over just, Tulane. Just beat them. Yeah. Uh, um, last week, by the way, take a look also at those scores in, uh, have you got the, uh, games against air force? Cause I think both of those were, uh, were under yeah. games. Air force won 20 to three. I mean, army yeah. won 20 to three. And uh, Navy, Air Force, 30, 30, Navy won 34 to 7. Yep. And I think the total there was 42 or 43. So even. And boy, what a comeback this season by Air Force. I mean, yeah. it was so bad until uh, just before the Army game. 
And then they were competitive in that game, covered mm -hmm. the game, and then went on a winning streak and hasn't lost since. Yeah. They won like their last, what, four games or something like that? Four, and that was after games. a really good season last year when they were picked to finish first or second in the uh, Mountain West. But uh, I, I do like Navy in this game. It's a competitive okay. rivalry. You know, these teams could be 0-11 going into this game, and this oh, will yeah. still be the most important game on their schedule. Uh, you could wonder just, again, Army having played all those weeks. You know, you got to worry with Navy is their rush. But with their rushing attack and a little bit better passing attack, I'm not as much concerned as if they were, you know, a very pass-heavy team where timing might be an issue after having three or four weeks off. Uh, Na Army, of course, I think led again the nation in in running. Uh, and these two teams, even when they – that's why we've seen so many low-scoring games because they know each other so well. They're both disciplined. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They prefer running the ball, which lessens the number of possessions in the game. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked with the uh, uh, with the uh, uh, Navy upset in this one, but I'm taking the points and I'm looking for a game like a a, a, a 23 20, maybe a 20 okay. to 16 type game where I think the points come into play because this basically now they're both going to bowl games. OK, Army has the uh, has uh, has already won a conference championship. And this, again, is for the Commanders-in-Chief trophy because they both beat the uh, Air Force. In fact, I think the final I wrote up here is 20-17 to 17 Army winning. So I think Army does get the win, but I wouldn't be shocked if Navy pulls the upset. Um, just uh, looking at the schedule dates, so Army had a bye the week between North Texas and Notre Dame. That was their last bye. Which was so what, mid-October, mid late-October? No, no, mid-November. Oh, mid-November. So yeah, that's so right. They, they, they played them. Then. They played them later. Yeah, they played uh, Notre Dame later than they, than uh, uh, Navy did. Yeah, and uh, anyway, so there you go, Army and Navy. And uh, I just hope, like every year, I hope whenever I watch the Army Navy game that there's snow. Uh, that's all. It's always oh, and awesome. The, and by the way, this is Army Navy. Army just won the championship against Tulane. Don't expect a letdown. No, uh, absolutely not. Even though we'll most, be interesting. Most, yeah, most teams, if they played the following week after a championship game like that, would yeah. have a letdown. Not not Army or Navy. Not not I in this so. not in this game. This but we'll see what happens. Down. I mean, if so, like if if Navy wins the game, somebody will have next year if it happens again, so bring that up. So, wait a second, yeah. just keep in mind they're all for one. Maybe they were thinking ahead, you know. So, yeah. but yeah, that's not going to happen. All right. Uh, and by the way, the dog has been good in this series as well, right? Because I think I have him down in Mark's book. We go 10 years deep and they were seven and three in the last 10. So, yeah, that sounds right. Well, I should mention they're all close games except for three of them. And I, th I want to say, if I looked at those three games, I think at least in two of them, if not all three, one of the teams, either army or Navy had a really good season and the other team didn't. And that's why we saw double digit wins in those three years. I think it may have been. Okay. Two of those three years. I think the other years, I think they were both mediocre teams when they met and it was still a one sided game. All right. Now, uh, let's uh, go into the NFL uh, week number 15. And again, we're going to talk a lot of college football next week. Uh, and uh, so uh, we're going to hold off. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. Just can't wait. The, the playoffs are here. Wow. All right. Uh, before we get into the games, though, uh, Jim and I, uh, did talk a little bit about the playoffs. Uh, Jim and I do the show on Mondays and Fridays, actually Mondays and Saturdays. Now uh, we're talking Mondays, NFL, NFL playoffs, NFL. Okay. Uh, we do a, a recap of the week and uh, from the previous week. So on Monday, we talked about all the games and we, uh, NFL week 14, and we went through the playoff scenarios. So uh, Andy, of course, uh, was not on that show. So we can kind of go over that now. So Andy, I guess, uh, what do you, if you just start the AFC, as far as the playoff picture, you can see that it's it looks like Denver is going to be the one team that is going to be able to hold off. We're going to try to hold off, uh, you know, Miami, Indianapolis. Uh, and if anybody wants to think Cincinnati is still in it, I guess they can do that. Uh, who do you think if you had a bet today? And by the way, because uh, Denver and the Chargers are tied, it's the Chargers. And by the way, the Ravens are also tied at eight and five. It's the Chargers who are actually the seventh seed. So you can look at it that way if you want to as well. But if you had to predict right now who you think will end up in the playoffs in the AFC with that final spot or two, who will it be? Okay, well, first, let's just briefly mention the teams that have been officially eliminated because there are a bunch of them. No, uh, we don't have to do that. We, well, we just, just that'll just, take time. Nobody. No, I'm yeah. just going to mention them. Cleveland, Jacksonville, Jets, Tennessee, Patriots, and okay. Raiders are all eliminated. So basically, we're looking at six teams uh, still with a possibility 
of uh, getting a wild card. Cincinnati at the bottom of five and eight. I felt that last week was the game that they had to win. I don't like their chances at all. Wouldn't be shocked by the upset against Tennessee, but uh, by Tennessee, but uh, I would see it uh, the next week. Look, they were fortunate against Dallas the uh, the other night to even get the five and eight. Miami and Indianapolis both at six and seven, two games behind uh, uh, the three teams that are currently eight and five. Both of those have chances with the schedule. The game this week, Indianapolis at Denver, will be important because if Denver wins, they effectively uh, eliminate uh, Indianapolis from catching them. Because and do you think that's what's going to happen? That Denver's going to win this week? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. so that they're knocks both, the Colts out. Yeah. So, they're both, well, no, it it just knocks them out. From, well, that uh, just knocked the Colts out. So uh, yeah, that would, means yeah. Yeah. that means Miami would be the only team to catch Denver or the Chargers. And do you think Miami will or won't? Or Baltimore, for that matter. So do you think they will or won't Miami? Um, I I don't think they will because, uh, well, I. Could they catch uh, – well, they have to win this week, I think, to still have a chance to get to seven wins. Uh, I don't think they could catch – well, right now it would be Baltimore and the Chargers. I don't think they could catch those two teams. Denver is the one that I'm not sure about. But Denver would have nine wins, and if uh, Miami loses at six, that would basically eliminate them. Yeah. Or Even I, though I, Miami's I, schedule I opens so. up after the Houston game, yeah. but still – it's asking a lot. I just don't like the way the Dolphins, unless Bradley Chubb finally gets back, you know, he's close. He's been practicing. They don't, they just would Phillips out. They have not had a pass rush this season. I mean, they gave up, I think 56 points in their last two combined games. And keep in mind in the last game, you can say what you want. And I'm a jet fan. You can say what you want about how good Aaron Rodgers looked, but he hasn't looked like that all year. And that's the Dolphins defense. So that's yeah. not good. It's not a good well, sign they, they for the gave, Dolphins. They gave, up, they gave up 20 points. The 36 that they gave up was at Green Bay the week before. That wasn't a surprise. That was a game no, I They gave up 26 Miami against lose. the Jets or well, 28. 20. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's right. Th- right. 32 no, 20, 26, 20, 26 overtime. 26. Yeah, they gave up 26 yeah. there because uh, of, of the overtime there. Um, uh, I, I, do you agree, Jim? Miami is the team on the outs. Uh, do you think it's going to be Denver, Chargers, and Baltimore as the last three in? Well, what happens if the Chargers lose to Tampa this week? I mean, they can possibly get within one, one of these teams can get within a game if they win. Colts, Dolphins. See, the Chargers are pretty banged up, and Tampa's pretty damn good. Um, not that they don't have injuries of their own, but keep that's in a mind the rough. Chargers will be playing Denver next week at home, but then their last two games are at New England and at the Las, the, uh, at Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. Well, they should win those two if they're healthy enough. And if they win those two, I mean, it's going to be awfully hard for the Chargers. Well, then they're 10 wins, so they're at least 10 wins. Yeah, Yeah. 10-win team is going to get in. But the game against uh, Denver might not be that easy. Oh, it won't be easy at all. Yeah. I mean, the Knicks is playing – Knicks is playing as well as anybody. By the way, both Broncos and Colts are coming off buys for their matchup this week. There's been a lot of play on the Colts this week against De- Denver, and I, yeah, I, saw that. I don't agree with it, although wow. I understand, you know, laying points with Denver might be, you know, if you were saying who's going to win the game straight up, I like Denver a lot. But, you know, when you're talking about laying four, it's, you know, yeah, I like them, but that's not as, as appealing. Well, let's see. They beat the Browns by nine in that wild game. They beat the Raiders by 10. They beat the Falcons by 32. They should have beaten the Chiefs, but that would have been a one-point game. Got blown out by the Raiders. Beat Carolina on this field by 14. Beat the Saints by 23. Lost to the Chargers and beat the Raiders by 16 at the start of the season. Back in October, they won a close game at the Jets in that horrible weather. Beat Tampa Bay by 19. Beat the Steel- uh, loss of the Steelers by seven and lost in Week One. So when they win, they've basically been able to win by more than one score. Uh, but the question is, uh, Indianapolis and and I have to like the quarterback matchup favoring uh, uh, favoring Bo Nix over uh, Richardson. Yeah, Richardson is – he can make spectacular plays and he can hit long – I mean, he can throw the ball through the stadium, but but his the, – the fundamental game, he makes a lot of mistakes on those little 5, 10, 20-yard passes. Yeah. He's very inaccurate. If the Colts beat Denver, 
and get within a game and hold the tiebreaker head to head. Keep in mind the Colts remaining three games this season are against Tennessee, Jacksonville, and the New York Giants. Well, that's that's a cakewalk. Should be cakewalk. Which so, which ones of those are on the road? Uh, just one, and that's the Giants. That, yeah, and that's probably probably the, the easiest, the, the easiest and, win of and the, the three. Giants are, and the Giants are tanking. Yeah. So sort of there you go. Out. But again, that that just shows you. That, 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 but you know, can they win in Denver? The way Denver's playing, I don't think so. I, I, I'm not worried about the points as well. Colts one and four ATS last five. I just don't like. Again, I don't think the kid. Uh, and I is think, ready. and I think the points they gave up to Cleveland and Jameis Winston and all that uh, defensively was an aberration. That was not. Yeah, exactly. I'm game. not. Yeah, I agree. Well, yeah, you know, the game defenses. against Cleveland, they should have never covered. Yeah. That that was that was that was totally a fluke. Well, that okay. was the game with that weird ending that uh, that I think I remarked last week that whoever lost that game would have had a bad beat because they were both in both they both had opportunities at the end to yeah. to win and cover. Obviously, exactly. uh, Denver needed to win by six or more, which uh, uh, they did, and uh, Cleveland uh, was in position to win or at least uh, cover late in the game when they were down by I think by nine. Do you guys recall uh, how many times? And again, you've wagered so often, but. I really can't, as often as I've wagered in my life, I honestly can't recall any time. It might have happened once where my team had that late defensive touchdown to cover the spread. I've had that go against me about maybe 20 times in my life, but maybe one out of 20. I don't know what you guys, have you guys ever recall having a lot of luck over the years where you've had, not a lot, but you know, a 10 percent, 20%. I mean, my, I'm like at 1%, but I don't know what your average is at when you get screwed by that defensive touchdown or the defensive touchdown covers the spread for you. I, I would have to think that it's happened. I can't recall any specific incident, but having done it for, you know, 40 plus years, I'd have to think it's happened a few times, but I'm still in the negative as far as bad beats are concerned. I'm usually, because usually bad beat often means you had the handicap right, you were on the right side, and even yeah. though it might have been close, uh, 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 well, you know, there's a difference, and I, I watched the Scott Van Pelt segment on bad beats Mondays, and it's very entertaining, very enjoyable, but there's a difference between a bad beat and a tough beat. Uh, you know, a tough beat is yeah. if a team's covering and then they're not covering because the other team scores at the end. That's a tough beat, but teams do that all the time coming from behind. I think Mort Olsham uh, of the gold sheet a uh, long time ago said of 40 to 50% of all games are random outcomes to the extent that the final scoring play of the game reverses the outcome. A bad beat is when you are in position late in the game and you're probably close to a 95% favorite to just win that game because you're ahead. And, and let's say the opposition starts on like their own three-yard line and ends up going down, which I think was the case with the Carolina-Philadelphia game, and goes down and wins in an improbable uh, circumstance where uh, probably they are probably like minus – I don't know, 1,500 not to score in that situation. So you're a huge favorite. That's a bad beat, and it usually has to occur very late in the game. As a poker player, I, I played a lot of poker, and a lot of my friends played professional poker. The the, be, the bad beats are always going to, not always, but most of the time are going to happen to the better handicappers, the better poker players, because they're in position. They've made the right choice. They've done the right handicap. They've played their hand well. And somebody does something dumb and they get away with it. It's usually the better handicapper or better poker player that suffers the most bad beats. Yeah, it's kind of like it, like uh, in, in Hold'em, the, the final card. There might be a two in whatever number of cards are remaining, I guess, that you haven't seen. Two in 35 or whatever it might be, depending upon the number of players. And one of those two cards shows up. And it's like, you know, to get an inside straight or something with a four. All exactly. Right. NFC. And in just a couple of weeks, we talked about Seattle's four game winning streak, all his dogs. In just a couple of weeks, both Seattle and Tampa Bay have gone from the outs to the ins. And Seattle now has firm control in the West because they have that tiebreaker on Arizona. 
Uh, LA though, the Rams came up with a big win last week. They're taking on San Francisco on Thursday night. So they need to win that one to kind of stay pace because they will be playing Seattle again. So that's going to be a big one. Tampa Bay, meanwhile, is now taking the lead over Atlanta. Atlanta does now get back to easy football, though. So we'll see whether it's too late. Probably not. They have the, Look, if they lose to the Raiders on Monday night, it's over. Uh, Tampa Bay, meanwhile, you talked about the big game they got up. They, they got coming up against the Chargers. But keep in mind, Tampa Bay, when they get done with the Chargers, they will be playing the Cowboys on the road, Carolina at home, and New Orleans at home. So they have uh, three losing teams after the Chargers. That really benefits the Bucs. So first of all, before and I that, ask by you, the way, that that means by the way what you just said, Tampa Bay controls their own destiny by winning out. Absolutely. Yeah. And the problem is, that? the problem is playing Carolina is not a bargain right now. No, right. not at all. Very well. They're playing In fact, very very well. Unlike right the now. AFC, only one NFC team has been officially mathematically eliminated, and that's uh, the woeful New York Giants. Even <laughs> Carolina at three and ten, at least for now, has a mathematical chance. It probably ends regardless of the result of uh, Sunday's games, of this weekend's games, because some other team will probably win and make it uh, almost impossible. Well, we'll make it en- and will make it impossible because Carolina won't be able to get the number of wins. In fact, Carolina, uh, the best they can finish if they win out is 7-10. And ten. And uh, right now, uh, there are only, uh, it looks like, uh, I don't know why they're not eliminated because they can't get more than seven wins. Well, Carolina's oh, well, they, making the they, playoffs. No, you, well, so. no, you know why? Because mathematically, they still have a chance, I guess, to finish uh, seven and six if they win out and Tampa Bay loses, which is not going to okay. happen. I think all right. so. So all for all intents, they are limited. But as Jim says, Carolina's playing some pretty good football right now. Yes, and uh, Carolina. Matter of fact, I came this close. I really they were my third team out of the out of the two wise guy picks this week. I was well, actually going to take him against at, the Cowboys. Look at the point spread. The yeah, it's only two and a half. Basically, basically, the game opened picker minus one. It's up to minus yeah. three. I was actually the only thing I was concerned about, which is why I did not get him in as my top three. Uh, just one little detail: they haven't been favored this year, and now they're the favored, and they're not good in the favored role. They have been a bad favored home favored role team. So, but I still like them. I like them a lot. Well, sometimes uh, you bet. Sometimes you bet on a team, but sometimes you bet against the team they're playing. Yeah, and I think the Cowboys have to lose in last week because last week they still had. And the a way they lost. idea that they thought that they were going to actually still be in <laughs> playoff blocked, contention. They blocked the punt and, and lose the game. And lose possession. And then and right. then from a betting standpoint, the Cowboys couldn't even hold them to a field goal and only took two plays for them yeah. to go to 60 yards. So I was still one of your... I, I had the Cowboys, and they arguably they should have covered that there game. There you go. But uh, that's one fact, of those they, bad beats. Arguably, they should have. And in fact, I said it before the punt. I said, you know what? There's only like a minute or so left in this game. The worst that should happen should be Dallas goes to overtime, but they should not attempt to block. They should attempt to set up a run back to increase field position. They still had timeouts and all. Why they wouldn't they? Walk- why would you? Why, if they blocked the punt, you know, 99 out of 100, they're getting the ball back. Uh, it's still. I don't know that. It's, well, okay. No, no. Here's the thought. The thought is that if they scored, they might score too quickly. And Cincinnati, with their offense, might get the ball back instead, whether it was a touchdown or a field goal that Dallas got. I, my thought was Dallas should be in position where they end the game, either with a winning touchdown a win, or more likely a winning field goal, or the game goes to overtime. And Aubrey can kick the ball about 70 yards, so you're yeah. thinking you're, and you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Uh, so I, so, I, I, so I, do you well, – uh, like, it, was, it, was, it was fourth and 27. They were already going to get good field. Yeah, fourth and 27. <laughs> Uh, so do you like uh, Seattle to hold on and win the West, Jim? Um, yes, I do. I Andy? Do. Uh, I, st- I still won't rule. I, the team that I – ask me the question after you know, tomorrow, who, after no, tomorrow no, no. night's game between the Rams because I still think the this, Rams have a chance. Well, great. And they play Good Seattle. Chance. And they yeah. own the tiebreaker. But – I mean, do you, what do you think right now today? Well, I think the Rams are going to have, we'll have a hard time with the Niners. Yeah. Because the, the Niners are, I mean, they've been. I think the Niners got their win off. The, you who were do, right on Seattle, about the Niners Seattle, last week, and it's going to carry over Thursday. Who does Seattle play their, their final three the games? Prob- the week? problem is 
the 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 Rams had to really fight hard last yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but they have game, to. They're gonna have to. They they, 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 this, they can't. This could they can't be another, lose. another one. I mean, the, the, the Niners had a cakewalk last week. It was almost yeah, having the a Niners walk. needed a cakewalk. They're still they injured. Did. Matter of fact, what's the update on that? That's the key right there, Jim. Are the are the injured players? Are they getting Trent Williams back? Are no, they getting um, is Bosa going to be back? I'm not sure that Trent Williams will ever play again. All right, is Bosa going to be back? Um, no, I don't okay. believe so. Is Jordan Mason going to be back? Are they down to their fourth and fifth string running backs? Um, I, so I believe San Francisco has has lost both of those. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I can't see it. By the way, keep in mind this too. Since 2019, the dog in the Rams San Francisco series has won eight out of the last 12, 10, one and one ATS in those last 12, including week three when the Rams upset San Francisco as a six point dog at home. I, so the- I could see the Rams winning. And I'll tell you what, if they win tomorrow night, I think they do win the division. Here's what Seattle has to do. Wow. They host- They host the Packers, okay? Then they host the Vikings. Then they're at Chicago outdoors. It's probably going to be horrible weather back there. And then they're at the Rams to end the season. That game may decide the division right there, Rams and Seattle. The problem with the Vikings is they have already clinched, and you're going to get these situations where teams that have clinched are going to start to relax. You saw it in the first half with the Bills last week, and then they woke up at halftime and started to play. Well, the so Vikings still the Vikings is, still have a chance to win the division because they play Detroit. I think they host Detroit the last game of the season. They've clinched the playoff if, spot, I believe. Well, but, if, Detroit, if Detroit loses this week, that opens up everything. Yeah. Well, I don't know who holds the tiebreaker between the uh, Vikings and the Lions if the Minnesota if they end up tied at the end of the year because that's a real possibility. Okay. So. And by the way, Detroit could lose this week against Buffalo. So. Oh, did, it, yeah. Tampa Bay in the South or uh, Atlanta? Oh, definitely without a doubt, Tampa Bay. Without a doubt. Cousins Cousins cannot play anymore. He's done. By the way, you want another another, uh, additional reason why Baker Mayfield uh, should be getting lower odds than 100 to 1 to win MVP? Do you know the only team that beat Detroit this year? Tampa Tampa Bay, Bay, too. Baker and Tampa Bay. That's right. So another reason why Baker, Baker Baker with a team that's not nearly as good as some of these other teams that are supporting the MVP yeah. player. I and mean, he has done he's done an awful lot for the Buccaneers. I, I, yes, I just he, don't like the he's idea. Sh- he's shown great leadership this year. Yes, I just don't like the idea nowadays with the MVP where they're giving it just solely on stats. It's like, again, we know Patrick Mahomes and J- and Allen and all these guys are great. You can give it to them every year. By, so, by the way, Greg, just, when just you, as an aside, did, I know we, you talk, we were supposed to, if, if everybody was here, we'd talk about the Heisman. Did you want to spend a couple of moments? No, we'll do that next week. Well, well no, we, it'll already be decided by next week. It'll be announced. Uh, yeah, no, we already talk college football. When you, Go ahead when and give you, it a shot. I mean, you, do you have uh, anybody but uh, Hunter? No, I'm arguing okay, against the people. Go. I'm arguing against the people who are making a case for Genty. A lot of people support him and all that. Yeah, but you can. I, do that I would say week. in most years, but not not a not when you have a player who plays both ways and plays as well as uh, Hunter does both ways. That end of end of uh, story. What are we going to say, Jim? Well, you're, you're MVP. You're talking about Josh Allen. You're talking about Mahomes. You're yeah. talking about. You, you're talking about go- golf. You're talking, you know, t- you're talking about players that are with very, very good teams and very, very good coaches, and they were expected to do well. When you talk about Baker, you're talking about a guy with a team that's very average that was not even favored to win their division, and he's carrying that's them. Right. He, to me, he's yeah. the most valuable player. That's will what I think. The, will, will he get the votes? No, no. he won't. No. no. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Uh, uh, I do have to ask you guys though about because uh, um, there there was a the one play in that Bills Rams game uh, before we move away from the Rams uh, where well first there were two. One was the refs not calling the uh, legal procedure on the Rams, but whatever. Uh, as you said, Jim, the other day, uh, every every game he gets screwed. But what <laughs> all Bills fans were talking about after the game 
was the decision by McDermott to call Terrible. a timeout. Awful, yeah. awful, was, awful. First mistake. of all, was to, uh, uh, I guess, allow Brady, because he's the play caller, to call a run play. because They have to communicate. So Brady's got to know, or McDermott has got to talk to Brady and say, by the way, do not call a run play here because I can't use my timeout. It's got to be a pass play. I, obviously, there's no, no communication. Brady calls the run. The clock's running. And instead of calling another play, he calls a timeout and completely ends his chance of winning the game except an onside kick. So this is the reason why Bills fans don't believe they can win a Super Bowl with McDermott. And I think there's a serious possibility that if the Bills, let's say the Bills go out in the first round of the play, I, th I think he's fired. Wouldn't be shocked. Well, they are tired. Of, they are they are tired of wasting Josh Allen's talents and going out. Yeah. But you you know, go if you lose to Kansas City every year, you know it's kind of like fighting going up against Michael Jordan in basketball. I mean, you're. You're going up against somebody that's really been good. Although I don't think the Chiefs are going to correct their problems and make it. I don't think they're going to make it this year. And by the way, uh, you're but, talking McDermott against Andy Reid. That's also uh, somewhat of a mistake. That's that's. But if he goes against now this week, you're talking to him about going against Dan Dan Crazy Dan. For, yeah. You know, and he, yeah, he does crazy things. But those players love him. Yep. And and he trusts. He he knows that he has to win these games with his offense because his defense is hurt. Yeah, but so, it, it, he's, that, he's, that, he's been like, Matt, I just did an interview with Jeff Risden, uh, covers Detroit. He does a great job. It'll be available on the r -Lads channel. We're also going to have a, a, an edited version here on ProLine TV. And part of our discussion was exactly that. I asked him about, or, or brought that up regarding the play. And, um, and yeah, Jeff, Jeff agreed. He was like, look, just look what happened basically after that play. What they do when they got the ball back? Touchdown. What did they do to get the ball back? Touchdown. They respond to Campbell. They respond to his bravado. They respond to his uh, his 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 gambling ways and the way that he he doesn't gamble like an idiot. He just gambles sometimes when most people don't, and sometimes he makes it, and sometimes he doesn't. Well, so when that's you got the way he's always when been. You got all those, when you got all those players out on defense you know you can't stop the other side. So you have to win the game with your offense. It's that simple. I mean, you got – they had like 11 – they had players on the field that game that had only joined the team the day before. I mean, give me a break. I mean, that was an amazing job. It really was. All right. So NFC, it's down to Washington – uh, first of all, before I move on, is, does everybody agree here that the Packers are going to the playoffs? I agree. They, they should, yes. Okay, yeah. so it's down to Washington. So Washington's eight and five. You got the Rams a game back, unless the Rams can catch Seattle. So what you got here is Rams, Seattle, and Washington, because both the Rams and Seattle can make the playoffs. So you got, and then you also have the Falcons, which I think we all have given up on. They're Arizona. Toast. And San Francisco is too banged up. So Arizona looks like the only team, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, besides the Rams that look like they have a chance to make the playoffs because of the fact that their schedule, as we talked about, is pretty easy, at least for the first, the next two weeks. So um, what do you guys think? Will Washington I, hold I would... on to make it or will someone else uh, take that seventh spot? Let me see who Washington plays the rest of the way. They play. Uh, they still have a game um, at the Eagles at home next week against Atlanta, who they're contending against, and then at Dallas at the end of the season. So they, you know, they. And again, a, that Dallas game is not going to be easy. No, well, I, I think Dallas is done. I, I'm yeah. going to put a fork in them. Well, yeah. we all thought they you were know, done after that only, long losing streak, won. and they they've beat only, Washington. They've only won one game at home this year. Yeah, and that was, and, the, uh, yeah. That yeah was and the now, after that fiasco last week, uh, you know, Jerry, Jerry's got to get his head out of his butt and make some changes. I mean, this team is a disaster. This is a team that, you know, and Mike McCarthy, and you're talking well, about he put a lot the team of together, though. Together. Jerry's the one that put that team together. Yeah, yeah look at it. Yeah. Um, the, when was the last time we went to the championship game, America's team? What, 27 years ago? 
And and you know why he doesn't make as many changes as does you he, wonder, well, why doesn't he fire coaches or why didn't he go out and sign all these players in the off season? He had the quietest off season out of all the potential contenders. And it's because he believes he's a businessman and he believes the Dallas Cowboys are being run beautifully because they have a market value like no other sports franchise. Exactly. And that's how he, that's what he looks at as a success. So um, now it's the I'm, wrong I'm way to think about it for football fans sake, but I'm going to say that with Derek Carr out and Taysom Hill out, Washington will win at New Orleans. I'll give them nine wins. Let's assume they lose even at home to the Eagles. They could beat them, but let's say assume. Then they host Atlanta the following week, and I think that if they need to win to get to 10 wins and basically clinch a playoff spot, they will win that game because and, – and the Dallas game won't mean anything for the most part other than possibly whether they finish with the one, two, or three wild card seed because they may rest everybody knowing that they're going to have to play the following week in a wild card round. So I think wins over the Saints and the Falcons will have Washington in there as a, a playoff team. As far as uh, uh, teams right. ahead, about ahead of them – uh, so that means you believe it's going to be Arizona. So you basically have already said that those are your seven teams, the seven teams that are in there right now. No. Um, no. Seattle, uh, Tampa Bay, I, Minnesota, I have, Green Bay, and Washington. I have not conceded the West to Seattle yet. Remember, they are, uh, uh, what, they are eight and five. Rams are seven and six. 49ers are six and seven. I'm going to say, and I know I have to make a pick here, but I'm going to say that Seattle misses out and that the winner of tomorrow's game between uh, the 49ers and the Rams gets in there. Yeah, 49ers. The 49ers! They have they the have, pedigree, and they, they know how chance. to win. And if they win this game, you know, that would be two nice wins in a row, although the win against Chicago, that, other, than, other than being What kind impressive, of odds do I have to give you? Uh, what, winning we, tomorrow We night? may not be. We no, 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 that the Niners giving, don't, go to the, don't make the playoffs. We may not be giving the Niners enough credit for last week's win because of who they beat. And how yeah, they beat them. I'm willing, I'm willing to not give them enough credit. They they had a meeting before that game where two players, Purdy being one of them, gave speeches to the team. The most overrated and, deal in sports, the, the pregame speech. Not well, always. Yeah, when you I win, I when you win it, yeah. when you don't, <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll know by. I guess we'll know after that game. Well, probably yeah. We'll probably know tomorrow night. But I will say that the winner between San Francisco and uh, uh, the Rams. I'm surprised uh, you you guys wins. actually still think San Francisco has, has a chance. Oh, I know. Got to play the game. Who has? The, uh, let me let me. Come no, I'm down not talking about this. the Ram game. I'm just talking about me, you have a chance to make down, the playoffs. Let me come down to this question: Who is the best kicking game of the two? Which two? Tomorrow's game. No, I wasn't talking. I was talking about the playoffs. No, I'm talking. About, I'm, I'm talking about that game. Well, I wasn't talking about that pivotal game. because yeah. whoever has the better, it's, it should be a very close game. And I'm trying to ask who, who has the best now. kicking game between San Francisco. Well, San Francisco doesn't Rams. have a consistent kicker. That's for sure. Pardon? San Francisco doesn't have a consistent kicker. We know that. So um, I haven't studied their punter. Why do they have a good punter? More about more about field goals than anything. Yeah, no, the, Moody is very inconsistent. I would give the edge most likely to the Rams between them and the 49ers only because of the schedule, although it may work out. The 49ers then are at Miami, then they host the Lions in week 17. We don't know what uh, where Detroit might be at that point. They may, but probably won't, have wrapped up the number one seed. And that could be very difficult, even though the game's in San Francisco based upon last year's uh, championship game. And then they end the season at Arizona, which probably may be a meaning, which could be a meaningless game for uh, for both of them. Probably more so for San Francisco than it might be Arizona, who still has a chance. But I'm going to I'm going to go with the winner of tomorrow's game. And in fact, if I had a pick, I'll say the Rams. I just got to notice Belichick accepted the job at UNC. Oh, gee, wow. Does he know those wins don't count against uh, the NFL record for most wins? <laughs> And he said he's going to build a NFL style team where the players are primed to go to the NFL and he's going to teach them how to eat, how to exercise, yeah. how to behave. He's going to teach them to be he NFL didn't, He didn't mention how to win, though. He didn't Pardon? mention how to win. He didn't mention teach them how to win. 
Well, that's not, uh, again, you know, what he's going to do is, and it's very, and I'm not surprised that you're saying that, Jim, because of the fact that, you know, he's very good friends with Greg Schiano. And Greg yeah. Schiano, uh, that's what he does at Rutgers. And he makes sure that the players, he has a real good coaching staff, and all he preaches to his recruits are, you come here and I'm going to get you ready for the NFL. And, uh, and, and that's why they come, because that's what they're, that's what and, they're there and, for. And, and they're, and, and they're going to they're gonna go to – Players are going to want to play for Belichick. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. So that should be very interesting. You know, they were comparing Bill. I mean, I'm not. I'm not making that up. That's what he said on television. No, sure. Yesterday. I can imagine that. Like I said, yeah. Uh, his because his son was the coordinator for. Uh, he was a not coordinator. He was an assistant coach for Shiano before he became the coordinator. I forget where he is right now. I think he's still still in the conference. Um, uh, Belichick. No, Belichick's the uh, defensive coordinator for Washington, the Huskies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so they have this great relationship. He even had Belichick, uh, come and talk to the team a couple of years ago. So he, it's exactly what he's doing. He's doing exactly what Shiano's doing is let me convince these kids to come here and I am going to show them how to become professional football players. It's, it's very smart. And there's no reason why he, he should try to go to the back to the NFL and repeat what he did. This, yeah. this is kind of a, this you know, good money, more relaxed. Yeah, and and building kids up from the ground up to get into the end, it's perfect. Very, it could for be him. very perfect. very satisfying for the way that he would end his career. He's got, he's got a great personal satisfaction out of that. My only question is, how will eighteen and nineteen years old respond to his uh, tough task masking? Well, I don't know how tough he'll be. his girlfriend. Kids, but but he's got a he's going to marry a girl that's a college, yeah. basically a college student. Yeah. She's 50 or 60 years younger than him. Good for him, man. God, Good for him. God bless him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I guess, by the way, quick question on that. Uh, is before we wrap up, I want to just go over some of these games. So, again, uh, tomorrow night, Rams, San Francisco. Uh, are you surprised that San Francisco is favorite? No, not because they're home, no. no. Okay. You know, neither team, by the way, neither one of these teams is very good. They're about, they're about equal. And when you look at the injuries throughout the year, well, that's, it even, it's even more so about equal. I mean, for well, Christ's sake, yeah. CMC only played like two games or part of two games the whole year. Who? I mean, now Trent Williams, left tackle, is gone. He, yeah. he may never play again. I mean, what you know, tragedy in his life. The baby died. He's injured. Yeah, that's I mean, tough. It's, it's been a rough year. For I don't him. think he's hurt. Well, maybe not. He's been he banged never, up. But he may never play again. No, what I'm saying is, is I don't. I think he's banged up. I don't think it's because of the phys physical. I think he needs a timeout. And Emotionally, you have to give him a timeout. Oh, I think if they were in the playoff race, like a serious, serious playoff race, he'd be playing. I think so, another reason for the 49ers being favored is they basically had a bye last week and ran for push yeah. to the limit in their win. Yeah, All I mean, right. Basically, once once uh, once Buffalo woke up. Buffalo owned that game. Oh, they were down 38-21. Yeah, that was just they were down so, to I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, try to get into your head here, Jim. So what? let's see. So I know this is this isn't easy to do. So let's see. So last week you your one of your big plays was Chicago over San Francisco. Okay, so last week I was you know, wrong. No, Look I'm at just, my television. I'm just I'm just, I'm just <laughs> okay. So <laughs> then you you also liked the Rams over the Bills last week. I did, and I won. Now this week, you the two teams are playing each other. You like the Rams against the Bills. They beat the Bills like they're one of the best teams in the NFL. And you said that they would do that because they were they were trying to get to the playoffs, and it was an important game, biggest game of the year. Here's San Francisco, the same banged up team they were last week. Who that's the reason you didn't like them because they were banged up, and now you've switched. And now you okay, like San Francisco. Well, well, let me, okay. As doing this for six decades. That, I'm, I'm really serious the, about this. The this is important to know. Handicapping sports is not a linear, linear progression. You're dealing with human beings, human frailties, and you're dealing with coaching and mismatches and situations. The problem is Chicago allowed the Niners to have the week off. Sure. Because it was so easy. Yeah. Where the Rams were, they had their, you know what, Coglione's in the vice in the second half. 
you're playing a much better Buffalo team that was celebrating off of winning the AFC East division, yeah. came in and didn't even play in the first half and almost caught them and beat them. If the game was another quarter long, Buffalo would have won that game. And so by the, the way, Rams, remember, so the Rams the, got the a Sunday night win. Buffalo, Buffalo's win the week before was against these 49ers. In the snow. Yep. That's another reason to uh, go with the Rams. So go well, ahead. No, but but tell me then uh, again. Again, I'm serious. So so why? Okay, the, uh, game, the game opened two. The game opened two, and the money has come in on the Niners. So I'm not the only one where is that's it? crazy. Yeah. It's up to three. Yeah, it okay. opened two. Even better. So my point is there's other big betters that have moved the number from two to three. Because okay. the average Joe doesn't bet early. And in the why, week. why? Why is that though? And because it, of what it can't I, just be because, because the Rams exactly are exhausted. Because of what I just said. Yeah. You re, you real? That's your is that the Rams are exhausted and San Francisco is not. They're equal teams with one team more rested than the other. Okay. Interesting. I've never looked at it that way, but I'm not an expert. Andy, Andy, which, Andy well, you be the arbiter here. I was going to say. Well, the he likes one the Rams. So. Well, I'm, well, I'm going to give you one reason why I do like the Rams. McVeigh versus Shanahan. That's has he point. had a has he had his number? Uh, I know he's he's well. For, and, and by the way, these are basically for both of these teams, Arizona and, and even see all four of the teams are basically playing playoff games the rest of the way out to uh, to make it into the playoffs. Only one team's going to get in from this division. I can't see one of the others getting a wild card. Rams last year, remember they went what six and one? I think down the stretch, they know they can do it. They know they can win these these big games. San Francisco last year was barely pressed for most of the season. So we've got a Rams team and, and they showed it last week against the game uh, that, uh, you know, they were underdogs in and playing maybe the second best team or third best, you know, depending upon where you rank Buffalo with Detroit and Philadelphia, really, you know, but I guess you got to throw Kansas city in there, but basically one of the top four teams in the NFL and, uh, and they managed to hold on. They took control early and then, you know, Buffalo being the kind of team that you know does have the ability came back. Uh, so the Rams are playing with the knowledge that they that the, a they know they have to win this game, and they know that they can beat this team. All right, so that's well, Thursday night. I mean, any t I mean, these are basically equal teams, so yeah. they yeah. definitely they know they can beat yeah. anybody that's equal to them. Well, not, the only thing the 49ers, is, is that if the 49ers win 27-14, I won't be shocked. No, I mean, I don't. I would be shocked either. I, I think the only thing that I just, I, I, I just think right now, I, I can't say they're even teams because San Francisco, which is so, nobody's more injured than San Francisco is right now. Yeah, remember I mean, the Rams just, had to play without uh, without their two wide receivers for a few games as well. No, no, no. Today in the game. Oh yeah, right. Nobody is more. You put them. You put them in this game. I mean, it's just a long list of guys that are out not playing. Rams, Rams are the healthier list. team entering this game, if you want to put it. You back. know, Greg, you, even though I'm making an argument like a college debate team here, I have not bet either side of this game. That's okay. okay? I mean, this so, is what these but, shows are but for. My, what, what's got me confused about the game, well, I know who bets, okay? I know I talk to a lot of people. Sure, but they're, they're not 100%. Went, somebody, some, somebody put a lot of money to raise this game from a two to a three. And I'm not, I'm not going to just disqualify that. Yeah, but I mean that that happens in games every week. I mean, there's a yeah, ton of games. Yeah, but it really, it really depends more on more than, a, more than a point. Depends on the quality of the better that makes me, yeah. okay, hesitate. And also, not maybe, the, maybe you know, I wonder if it was a reaction to what the 49ers did last week, and how much, how much more sure-handed, if at all, will this 49er team be than last week's 49er team? Against the Bears, are they? Uh, they didn't lose anybody that I'm aware of that they did. That they <laughs> no, I don't think last, so. They were without last week, but are they getting anybody back that they didn't have last week? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what's going to be tough for San Francisco because when you got a whole bunch of guys injured, you can come out one time and everybody's dissing you, and and you, oh, you're all banged up and your season's over, and then you rally, like you said, Jim. You get the you get the speech and you rally and you go out and you kick their ass, but that only usually lasts a game. That in my experience, I lost like it a didn't. Game. It didn't even last a quarter for the Bears who were in that situation. Yeah, they were out last of it in a quarter. Yeah. No, no, no. But I'm saying that they were also they had a new head coach who they liked. You know, the interim head coach. They got rid of the guy they couldn't stand for all the bumbles, and that's that historically 
if you had bet on new coaches in that type of situation, you're winning more than losing. That game was never was was yeah. never close. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not, may, and maybe that says more about the talent on Chicago. Although I like the Chicago team as far as the talent goes, but it was a situation that you would have. You know, maybe they don't win the game last week, but you expected a much more competitive effort, especially early in the game, and they never showed that. And maybe that shows something about San Francisco's resiliency, saying, "Hey, we know everybody's counting us out. We know we've got everybody out." We're still a good football team. John Lynch has put a good team together on the field, and now sure. it's the time for the backups to come in and show that they deserve to be on this roster because they might be in a needed situation, and now they are in a needed situation, and they were out. Now, can they sustain that? We'll find out a little bit about that tomorrow night. I think this game's going to be a war. Uh, you've got two decent coaches. I'd prefer the Rams coach. I, I prefer McVay. Um, I prefer Stafford over Purdy, although I think Purdy's very good. Stafford is definitely a step up. Um, it, th other than that, I mean, the left tackle being out, you can see a Rams having an edge there. The home field advantage usually in the pros is not that high anymore. You are going to possibly be pay playing in rain. That is a possibility because there is some weather on the West Coast. That could affect the Rams because they are an indoor team. The other thing is I remember in this painfully, the Rams were at home against Miami and looked like crap. And they were at home against Philadelphia and they looked like crap. Yeah, well, so that's there, So there have been moments this year where the Rams have really looked bad. Like San and Francisco, the two weeks prior the same way, to Chicago. The same way. Both of these teams have had off years. Yeah, uh, this is, you know, there's no Yeah, question. this isn't, this is, these aren't two really good football teams. Yeah, no, like you not. said. Yeah, we might they're as well talk about the they're talented but missing too much. Both teams. Yeah, they've had a they've had some rough. I mean, Stafford had a really good game. The question is, will oh, he? Stafford's amazing when he's right. Is yeah, he going to be able to keep that going? That's the question. I don't know. Yeah, we I don't know. know. So. The other thing is the Rams' running game has improved over the last few weeks. They're now over 100 yards per game. They were down around 90-something about a month ago. So they've actually been able to increase that, which I think helps a lot, especially when you've got those two receivers. Yeah, yeah. and, and San Francisco, is, again, they're down to their fourth and fifth and sixth string running backs who will be playing in the game. So the, Probably the biggest injury that I would worry about is Trent Williams' left yeah. tackle. It, yep. he, that's a huge – and people don't realize what yep. a – what a big difference. And he's probably, arguably, the best left tackle in football. And and that is a huge problem. So, but still, I worry about, I know that money came in. I know who took the bet that moved that number from two to three, and it bothers me. Okay. Well, I guess we'll find out. Um, that's tomorrow night. And again, we'll keep an eye on the weather as well. Because, again, like Jim said, that could definitely be an impact. Because uh, we said the same thing about Seattle's weather. They're both not too far. What do you think uh, about the total, Andy? Uh, I would I go under, up, even though yeah, I'm not a I, total guy. I didn't come up with much uh, on the total. Um, what, what's it at right now? It's 40-something? 40 49? 48? No, it's a little lower, I think. Did Victor put out an, a, a total on this game that we know of? No. I didn't get to read his letter, but um, I would think, given the situation, I think both teams are going to try to run the ball a lot and uh, on short pass. So I would, I would probably think under. All right, let's go ahead and run through uh, with our remaining time the rest of the games of uh, note. Even though uh, it seems like Cincinnati are still uh, considered, I guess, long shots to get in, but here's a big trend in the Cincinnati game. Uh, care of uh, Playbook Sports Magazine, and that is that the Bengals have covered 16 straight games as a non-division favorite of three or more when they're coming off an NFC game, and they're three and zero in that spot this year. So 16, and, and by the way, they're four and zero straight up ATS as a favorite on the road this year. Tennessee 0 and two straight up ATS home dog this year. So Cincinnati trying to hold on uh, for their little hope when they travel to Tennessee. Uh, Dallas, Carolina, Carolina, two and a half point favorite Panthers have covered five straight, but it's their first favorite role this year. The three and 11 ATS last 14 is a home favorite. Do we all agree that Carolina is to play here? Uh, well, here, here's the, let me, let me explain there. This is another money situation. I, I bet, 
I bet Panthers when it came out, I got it at pick and I got it at minus one. Now it's three. Yeah. And I know who moved the number. I know who moved the number because I spoke to him on the phone. And a lot of money on the Panthers. A lot of money came in on the Panthers. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I can't I can't I can't play Dallas. It's just a question of do I want to play Carolina? If I had to play, I'd play Carolina, even at the three. So I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna I'm it's gonna, it really, Andy. It's really gonna, a money line bet. Yeah, money line play mo- mostly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just, I yeah, just think you know, Carolina has shown the last few weeks, especially last week against Philadelphia, they have not quit on the season, and that's something no. you have to look. You look for at uh, look at Tennessee last week. Uh, they ended up losing that game to Jacksonville. Uh, you know, you, you when you give up ten points as Tennessee did last week, you're supposed to win those games, and you're supposed to win it by probably more than one score. Um, you know, okay. there's a team that uh, I, I think, uh, you know, that they've – now, we'll see what happens with uh, you know, Cincinnati reacts after, you know, their uh, close yes. call last week. But uh, Carol, Carolina is a team that I can understand why people might be betting on them the rest of the way, especially if they show again and get a win this week. Well, see the, 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 thing, the, the thing about this part, of, this part of the season, especially when you have 10 or 11 teams with really negative seasons, two wins, three wins, four wins – out of all the games that have been played, I mean, you really have to start looking at who's quit and who's 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 just looking at next year. And I mean, for example, the Giants. I mean, are they even trying to do anything? Yeah, uh, it's it's, so, it's a whole different handicapping method to get through this part of the year. Well, we'll I find out if Dallas is going to quit because they looked like they were quitting and then they got back into it. Now they've lost again, so I think we're in agreement that this is probably their last chance to see if they've quit yet on the season again. Yeah, I, I wow. can't remember any time. Now we've got a 17 game schedule, four games left. I can't remember any time, even in these few short you, uh, years that we've had the 17 games, where as many as six teams have been mathematically eliminated with basically a month to go in the season from making the playoffs, yep. especially with an additional team now making the playoffs up from six to seven. So, and that's, in, I'm talking now in the AFC, the NFC is a lot, still, still a lot, but six teams in the AFC playing out the string right now. All right, so I'm going to start to jot this down now. Uh, this is a new uh, n- uh, number I'm going to jot down every week. Uh, I'm going to call it Jim's Top Players. <laughs> so Jim's got – so these are like Jim's little secret uh, contacts who put oh. in tons of money and moved the line. I didn't, I didn't so bet got, the Niner Ram game. Please I said Jim's Top Players. Okay. Not plays. Okay. Players. So now you have your, now you have you have to identify them as number Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, Mr. D. Yes, okay. Jim, can you do that? So who's so who so who's uh, so San Francisco will be Mr. A? No, that's Mr. C. Oh, you're gonna go by their last names, and then no, Carolina. No, it's, not, it's not by their last names. Who's Carolina? How are you? I getting, like that, okay. Greg. I like the conclusion you came to there. <laughs> and who's Carolina? I was thinking A, B, C, D, and Car- said, Carolina is by Mr. A. Mr. A is the biggest bet of the week. All right, Mr. A and Mr. C. We got Carolina, San Francisco. We'll see if Jim has any more from his players as we now roll keep keep dots. in mind the lines for Mr. A and Mr. C are a lot better than we than we see now. So you've got to yes, use the correct. lines that they better that. That is that is correct. These are people that bet numbers. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, all right. So what we'll do is all right. So we'll do so. The number of San Francisco was what at the time? Two. And it was Pickham, Carolina. Picker one. But All right. So so we'll do we'll that. Do. That player, that player is most likely be he would bet mostly money line plays. Yeah. He okay. wouldn't bet. He wouldn't lay anything. I'm guessing okay. it, the bet may have been made after the Monday night game where Dallas lost the way they did. Cause I think Dallas was actually on Sunday when they opened up a one point favorite. And when they reposted it on Tuesday morning, cause they take it down for the Monday you, night game. They you were are correct. Point. You are correct. All right. Correct. So, um, but again, we're going to do this in two different well, ways. I'll give you. I'll give you one more play. Well, we're not. Well, so let's go through the games, and you can okay. pick it out. Okay. So, uh, but keep in mind that this is going to be done in two different ways because Mister C got him at two, but the public is getting three. So, let's say if if the game is won by three, Mister C's got to win. The public's got to tie. That's the way we have to do it. All right. So now let's move on. Uh, Jets and Jacksonville. Jets a three-point favorite. 
Uh, I got to believe Mac Jones has a really good history against the Jets because I don't recall as a Jet fan ever, ever losing. I mean, ever beating Mac Jones, which is a really sad thing to think about. Well, uh, Mac, Jones was always, Mac, Mac Jones was always coached by Bill Belichick when he faced the yeah, Jets. Yeah, but still. Uh, Jacksonville, 2 0 1 ATS is a home dog this year, 5 1 1 ATS in their last seven. Um, yeah, I can't see Jacksonville winning two straight. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know if you I guys can. have anything on that one. And I should, no, this, this, I believe the line is three and a half right now. I can certainly see this, Jacksonville winning this by. Look, they 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 won last week, uh, without uh, on the road, uh, with uh, a lot of players that are not going to be playing this week as well. Okay, uh, this, this is not a game I looked at. I'm, I'm I'm I am kind of isolating, staying away from teams that I can't quite figure out what the hell they're doing. Washington and New Orleans. Washington is seven point favorite, and New Orleans has won three out of four. Washington, but, meanwhile, uh, coming up there by Bar. Bar is out. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so no, is Jason Hill. And, and Hill is out. Yep. Yeah. So um, that's why this Teas- is number it's a seven. Teaser game. Teaser game for Washington. And, exactly. Uh, New Orleans exactly. two and eleven against the spread is a home dog of more than one since two thousand and twenty one. One and three in that spot this year. Uh, Washington's got Philly on deck. Uh, either one of you guys have a, a you know, a, a pick either way here. Convincing only a teaser, a teaser yeah, Washington, Washington. That's all yeah. I could do. Is I can't, I can't bet Washington lay in that number, yeah. but I would, I would, if, if I'm going to play a teaser, I'd play Washington in a teaser. Miami, Houston, Houston favorite by three. Houston just four, 12 and one in the last 17 is a home favorite. Uh, also just one in 10 ATS home versus losing teams. In their last 11, 0 and 2 in that spot this year. Uh, Miami, meanwhile, uh, have not been playing all that great defensively in their last two. They would have been on a two game losing streak if they would have lost that game to the Jets last week. But I, I just can't take Houston when Houston just can't cover at home as a home favorite. Are you showing, are you showing um, three or three and a half? Well, yeah. again, could be either. So, um, what are you going to go with? You, you guys like a strong play either way here? Not a strong like- play, but I, w- I would definitely lean to Miami at three and a half because yeah. I, I think these teams are kind of marginal, um, marginally. They're having regression years, and um, you, you got to do remember that Tua was out for quite yeah. a bit this year, and that made their record look a little bit worse than it is. Uh, th- they're not good. They're not great. They're okay. And but Houston's having an off season. They're, they're, the the rookie quarterback is not having the season he had last year. Uh, so I'd take the dog here with the, with the three and the hook. Kansas City, Cleveland. Yeah, no, by the way, I'm I'm with Miami as well. Uh, if the line goes to four, they might make a, make a teaser play because you would get a key number of ten in there. I don't know that I would do it at three and a half unless you did a six and a half pointer, but uh, which I normally don't do. Uh, but again, and, and Jim mentioned very important thing. Uh, two has missed four of their 13 games. That's, uh, you know, a third of a season, basically. It skews their stats and their record a lot. And they lost, remember, those two games that they came, that when Tua came back, they were high-scoring games. They lost, I think, on the last play to Arizona, 28-27. And the following week, 30-27 to up in Buffalo when Buffalo kicked the late field goal. So Miami, when you throw in the four games that Tua didn't play and those two close losses where he played well in his return, Miami's a better team than they show. Houston can't really say that they've had a lot of key injuries this year, but but what the Jim said about Stroud is, is definitely true. Now they are coming off a buy. How much of a difference I will, uh, you know, I can't say, but it's also an important game for Houston because they have to hold off Indianapolis. And I believe uh, they will not know because uh, Indianapolis plays a later game at Denver. Uh, I think those teams uh, could be a one game difference between those teams. If I think Denver, if, uh, if Indy wins and Houston loses. Kansas city at Cleveland, uh, the chiefs are now, Oh, and seven against the spread in their last seven. They're a four point <laughs> favorite here. This Cleveland. is a from six or six and a half down to four. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's you, you probably have to bet the game over because if Jameis Winston is, is the quarterback, and I believe he's going to play, uh, they've talked about going to the backup, his backup. I don't think they're going to do that. But Jameis has a tendency to score for both teams. So he makes it exciting. It's fun to watch him. But, you know, I, if the game was six, which I did not bet it, I, I, I missed the boat on I probably should have taken the six. I, I'm not going to run after the bad number. But, but 
I favor the other thing is Cleveland. You know, I looked at the weather. There's a potential bad weather there. If it's as bad as it can be in that stadium, because it's right along Lake Erie and it can get nasty there, wind and rain and snow and all that stuff, I would favor Cleveland because they have a decent roster. Um, and Kansas City is Kansas City is very disappointing. They're really, their offensive line <laughs> is not are, protected. What are they? 11 and 1? Yep. Yeah, but it's, it's the way <laughs> I know, I know. You know it's just plus, so hilarious plus, that we're saying plus it. They're 56 points. I know and that. One. I, I mean, can't wait really till the day comes when my team By the way, is tw- 12 and 1. 11 and 1. 12 and 1. I can't one. wait. 12 and 1. I yep. can't wait till the day that my team is a disappointing 12 and 1. I may never live that long. I so. I actually I'm going to be on Kansas City this week. I think they are sick and tired of hearing about all these close games, and I think they're now in a position to say, hey, we only got four games left. We want to go into this postseason the way we went into the season last year. Cleveland's coming off of three tough games in a row, the two games against Pittsburgh and the game against Denver in the middle. They're out of it officially right now. I think Kansas City goes in there, takes care of business. Uh, We see more of the bad Winston than we see the good Winston. I think Kansas City wins this game, and it might even be comfortably. All right, I'm taking the Browns to win the game outright. Um, oh. I'm, I'm going to go the exact opposite. I think the, I think this is one of those games that the Chiefs, everybody believes the Chiefs can't do no wrong. They keep winning. They're going to keep winning. And that, oh, but maybe the Chargers can upset them or, or maybe they could have. But this week, everybody will go, oh, of course, they're going to beat Cleveland. And then this is the week they're going to lose. So I'm going to go ahead because look at the Browns. They've won. They've beaten the, the, the Ravens and the Steelers at home this year. There's seven, three, and one ATS. The last 11 is a home dog. Uh, look, obviously, I'll take the four because the Chiefs will probably find a way to win the game by one. Um, but the only uh, thing with Cleveland now is they were playing these last several games with desperation. Yeah, but you're playing Desperation's the out of the window now. But you're playing the Chiefs. You're playing they're the looking to stay home. They're, they're looking to stay home for Christmas and not get No, injured. no, but, I don't think so. By, don't by the way, I don't think Cle- the Browns ever thought they were making the playoffs. But no, I did not. Well, <laughs> not when you're averaging only 89 yards per game on the ground. That's something. So Andy's going. A- Andy's going to go yeah. against the 0 and 7 ATS last yep. seven. All right. It's got nothing um, to do. It's got nothing to do with the 0 and 7. It's got to do that this is a spot for Kansas City to start getting ready for the playoffs, especially okay. after the last two games. Uh, next up, Baltimore Giants. Uh, boy, if there's a game that you probably think about the same thing you just said there, I Andy. Took, I took 16. Yeah, you might as well give 25. I uh, think Tommy DeVito, who's going to be starting this week, will throw four touchdown passes, one to the Giants, <laughs> three to the Ravens. That's because Mama is going to make some lasagna and bring it into yeah. the clubhouse. It is an, it's, the highest, it's the highest line of the season. It's really hard to make a case for the Giants except for the uh, the number, but you do have to wonder how DeVito is going to perform against uh, a Baltimore team that I think, you know, the Giants can't, even with we the players, really who, knows, who, knows about, who, knows about, uh, who knows about neighbors' availability, the Giants don't have much of a passing Giants game. Suck. This, this could be a game where Baltimore's pass defense finally gets to face a team that they can have success against. And that's <laughs> they something can play they're their backups. Need. Well, they're going to they're gonna need to have uh, improvement on that uh, defense, okay. uh, the pass defense, if they have any hopes of advancing beyond the wild yeah, card. Yeah, and that's not going to happen. Um, I don't think they have a chance to change their defense. They're, they are what they are. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they're not going to be able to win. The, they're not going to be able to go very far this year. Um, I, really, I really think the handicap in this game just depends on how much Harbaugh wants to press his team to push – and, yeah. and, and and risk injuries and stuff. I mean, there's they're gonna okay. they're gonna run the ball. They're gonna eat up clock. They're you know it's gonna be one of those. Baltimore kind of does have the Giants, uh, the Steelers, rather up next week. And that's uh, a huge game to look forward to. Speaking huge of the Steelers, they're at Philadelphia. The Eagles are right about five. Pittsburgh at two to one on the money line. Uh, Phillies won nine straight. Pittsburgh seven to one in their last eight. And uh, how about this? Head coach Nick Sirianni has never lost against the spread, 9-0, all time, off back-to-back, uh, straight-up ATS wins. Actually, I think that's the uh, – yeah, I think that is. I think that's uh, either him or it's the opponent. I'll have to double-check that. 
could but be Tomlin. You get that right he does, here. He does, he does very well as an underdog, at least. That you get, right, you get all that stands. information right here at uh, Playbook Sports Magazine, and it's right here in the corner, and it's uh, the opponent off back-to-back straight-up ATS wins. So he's 9-0 all-time, 2-0 this year, I believe, in that same spot. Uh, what do you guys think about this one? It's good. This is one of those big games that will be on at the same time as Detroit and Buffalo, at the same time as the Chargers and Tampa. They've got all these great games all at the same time. Un- unbelievable. And it's so it's so ridiculous. But anyway, I think the, Lions, the think? Lions maker, I think, put up his hands and said, I don't know what to do with this game. Let's put it in between a field goal and a touchdown. Let's make it that five and a half and see which way the public moves this game. I like, I like Actually, Pittsburgh in this game. Uh, yeah, I, you know, there's something – you remember last year when Philadelphia just took off like a rocket and then all of a sudden at the end of yep. the year, there was something that kind of stuff is going on again. I'm, I'm hearing all you're, this. You're talking about, about the Graham what, comments about the uh, yeah. Smith and uh, the relationship between him and Hertz. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm very I mean, concerned is, about that. This is Whose relationship Hertz and, and, and this, uh, this clubhouse Smith. and rumor. I mean, Devonta Smith. Wide receiver, yeah. I don't know what the hell's going on with this team. Why? Why they? I mean, they did it last year. They're doing it again. You know what that I means? Mean, Pittsburgh. The next time gotta, they lose, you, you want to talk about coach of the eye. year? How about you talk about Mike Tomlin? Yeah. What he's doing there is remarkable. This they're they're going to come in there to play. They, this is this is a tough. I don't see how you can give this team five and a half, six points, five points. I I don't I don't get it. Maybe three. But not this. The line's too high. Pittsburgh has a really tough uh, end of the season schedule. They're at Baltimore on Saturday. Then they host Kansas City on Wednesday. And then they host Cincinnati to end the season. Philadelphia at Washington. Host Dallas. Host the Giants. So uh, that's uh, an edge right there to the Pittsburgh, to the Philadelphia Eagles schedule wise. Uh, They could afford to lose this game. That's for sure. New England and Arizona. Arizona is a four and a half point favorite. And uh, six, by the way. Both, yeah, I wonder what, why anybody would do that. But uh, Maybe that Arizona, was Mr. B. Arizona and New England yet. have lost their last three games, but the difference is New England has lost their last three games to losing teams. Arizona has lost their last three games to teams with records of 500 or better. Arizona 4-0 straight up and against the spread versus losing teams this year. I believe they're going to make it 5-0. and And uh, I'll go ahead and give the four. What do you guys think? I, I didn't. I didn't have any opinion on this game. Andy? Well, they, they burned me last week against Seattle. Uh, they still have a shot at, uh, to uh, win the division, possibly make a wild card, though that's doubtful. Um, New England, I, I give them some effort for some game performances they've had in recent weeks, but I do think Arizona gets healthy this week. Buffalo and, and, the number, the- and as I mentioned, the number has come down. So they Buffalo are at England. Detroit. Detroit's a one and a half. Uh, is that still one and a half? Detroit one and a half over Buffalo. I, I saw two a little earlier today. So a lack of respect there for the Lions uh, to be only a one and a half, two point favorite at home. Uh, but uh, the Bills trying to avoid a two game losing streak. Bills are one and two straight up and against the spread as dogs this year. Detroit, meanwhile, on an 11 game winning streak, head coach Dan Campbell, all time 29, 10 and one against the spread when he faces teams with a 500 or better record. Who do you guys like? I, I I'm looking at the under in this game. Surprisingly enough, uh, we know the, uh, the. I think it's what 50, 51, something like that. Um, well, I, I think it's what, higher than that, Andy. Oh, you know, what? maybe maybe it's fifty three. Maybe that's the number that I first thought. I, I, th- I think I think, I think we're that. looking at fifty four. Wow. 54. Both of these uh, teams they rank one and two in points. Detroit thirty two point one and Buffalo thirty and a half. But look at their numbers defensively. 20.6, that's number eight for Buffalo, 18 for Detroit. So while the offense is getting a lot of uh, credit, the defensive numbers have been pretty consistent. The other thing I like, and this is where we could see teams march down the field and turn it over, although the defenses have been really good. Buffalo, only seven turnovers lost. Detroit, only 12. Defensively, Buffalo's forced 24, and Detroit has forced 20. So you've got the immovable object against uh, the impenetrable force uh, with the uh, offense and defensive turnovers. Both teams, very good, especially Detroit at running the ball. Um, and Detroit's very good at, at defending the run this year, not so much against the pass, uh, but they're very good. Pay. I, I, 
I, I really can't pick a winner in this game. Maybe if I did anything, I could tease Buffalo up. Uh, through, uh, if, especially if it goes back up to two, because uh, I think there'll be some play on Detroit, but I, I think I'd play the under in this game before I would play either side. 53 and a half, 54 is the number yeah. right now. It may even uh, go higher. Jim? Until there's buyback. Uh, I'm going to, I have to, I have to go with um, who I think is, I mean, the momentum, the, the injuries on Detroit's defense really bother me, but I'm going to stick with Detroit uh, in, in not a very, it's not a it's not a super play because of those injuries, but I like Detroit. By the Indeed. way, an, another another reason I do like the under, and this is something to consider. How's the best way to to keep the other team's prolific offense off the field? You run, run. the ball. You don't have a lot of time. You, you have more time run off between plays. Both of these teams run. 151 per game for Detroit. 126 per game for Buffalo. So they both have the ability in Detroit, especially with those two great running backs, Gibbs and uh, Montgomery. So I think we see a shortened game only because it's kind of like the Kansas City thing. You don't want the other team to have the ball as much as possible because they are so good at scoring. Excellent well, keep, point. Excellent keep point. in yeah. mind, then, you need to pay attention to, uh, just like last week, we talked about it that one of the biggest issues might not have been the defensive injuries, but the uh, left tackle injury. And that's what you saw last week with Decker out. They, yeah. they could not run the football. And uh, so keep an eye on Decker. If Decker's not in there, Detroit's going to have a hard time running the football again. And also keep in mind on the fact that both starting defensive tackles might not play for Detroit which would mean that Buffalo would have a much easier time running the football. So keep an eye on those injuries on both sides of the ball. As far as Andy's point that running the football is going to be a big uh, potential uh, outlier in this one. It should, it, should be part of the, it should be part of the game plan. Could be affected by who plays. Should be part uh, of Indy and plan. Denver. We talked about this is a huge one in the AFC playoff picture. Indy uh, has got a, uh, you know, an easy schedule after this. So if they can pull off the upset, all of a sudden, Indy might be looking as the team to, to, to get to that uh, final playoff spot. But uh, the line is four, I believe, uh, for Denver. They've won I, saw three some, I saw some three and a halves in there. Like, there were. There are some. Uh, they've won three straight, straight up ATS. Indy's won two out of three, uh, but just won four ATS last five. Uh, I, I like Denver in this one. They're just better than Indianapolis. It's a home game. They both need it. I'm taking the Broncos. What do you guys think, Andy? I, I like I like Denver. Uh, they've got a two-game edge over Indy, so a win here would give them a three-game edge and a tiebreaker advantage. And, of course, that means should they end up in a tie, it would go to Denver for, for the wild card. That doesn't eliminate Indianapolis from making a wild card, but keep in mind that the other two contenders right now also have eight wins, so they could yeah. either remain or fall another game behind. So yeah, they're right basically, the and, and because Denver is – Tied with the Chargers, and you know Kansas City can't be caught in the division. It's also a critical game for Denver because a loss there hurts yeah. their wild card chances. And again, for the same reason, even though they'd still be a game ahead, should they end up tied with the Colts, the Colts would have the tiebreaker edge. I think Denver's the better team. I think they've got the better quarterback, and I think they've got a better defense. And playing uh, up high in Denver, I think, is also an advantage. So I think that uh, asking them to uh, cover this number, which they've done several times. I think I went, away, went with their margins earlier. I talked about it. I like the Broncos. I, Andy said it 100% correctly, in my opinion. You got the coach, you got the quarterback who's who's playing better than the other quarterback. You got mile high, you got potential weather. You always have potential weather in Denver. No. You never know from 10 minutes, to, it changes every 10 minutes. So, and you got an indoor team playing outdoors in cold weather. That's always an edge. Um, and they, I think that you, you've got a head coach that's a Super Bowl coach that against a younger coach that's made some mistakes this year, although I think he has a lot of potential going down the road. So okay. all, those, yeah, all you, those reasons. You you just lowered my 100% by about 50% because you made the good points. I did not mention the coach. I did not mention the cold weather. And I uh, did not mention one other thing that, that you brought up as well in the analysis. You just added to it. <laughs> Very, all very right. Completely. And then another big game that'll be uh, lost within all the big games on Sunday at four o'clock is Tampa Bay and the Chargers. Chargers are a three point favorite at home. Uh, Tampa Bay's got that easy schedule after this. So if they can win this game, they are pretty much looking really good to win the South. Chargers, meanwhile, one and two in their last three. So, you know, they're going to want to get back on the winning side. 
Uh, check this out, though. Both teams go into this one uh, in a good spot trend-wise. Tampa Bay has covered 9 out of 12 as a road dog, and the Chargers are 8-1 and one, straight up ATS as a favorite. So um, that's this year. So they are a really I, good favorite role team this year. I'm surprised at that. I didn't know that. That's, so Chargers three Tampa this, this Bay. This is a this is a hard this is a hard one. I mean, I, I got to just for the hell of it. I got to take the dog, uh, Baker and, and Herbert. They're both great. I think they have tremendous. Herbert's gonna. I mean, that's gonna be a good football team down the road. They're they're banged up a little bit. They got Harbaugh there. This is gonna be the Chargers are gonna be one hell of a football team starting next year. Very competitive. They. Denver and the Chargers could easily challenge the Chiefs next year to take that division. Yeah. Uh, I, think I would, look, take, I would take the point, but it's it's a marginal. It's not a big play. Yeah, see, I, I'm looking at the, the other side here. If you look at Tampa Bay, uh, they had lost four straight games to a quality team, the Ravens, and then they lost to the Falcons, lost to a quality team, the Chiefs, and a so-so team in the 49ers. The la then they had their bye week, and their last three wins – over the Giants, over the Panthers, over the Raiders. On the other hand, you mentioned about the Chargers. Uh, their two losses came against elite teams in Kansas City and uh, Baltimore as far as that goes. So I'm willing to overlook – I'm going to use a horse racing analogy. As, as, nice as, I, as much as I do like Tampa Bay, this is a drop in class for the uh, Chargers compared to who they've just played and lost to and a rise in class for the, uh, for the Buccaneers. So um, I've, I've got to lay the short price with the Chargers here. Again, in a game that they need to keep winning to maintain their hold in the uh, AFC. They, they can't win the division title. Tampa still can win the division title. And, you know, who knows what happens if, they, uh, if the uh, Falcons lose to the Raiders Monday night. And that's possible. Tampa would still have a one-game lead. And then on Sunday night football, another big one, the Packers at Seattle. Packers are about two and a half. Uh, and uh, they are uh, – the unlikely favorite in this spot, as far as we're concerned, uh, because Seattle's won their last four since the bye, all straight up ATS as dogs. Uh, they did get their right tackle back after the bye. They get some continuity there. Uh, they didn't need Kenneth Walker last week. Charbonnet came in and had a monster game. Uh, Green Bay has covered 10 straight versus NFC West teams, and they're 3 and 0 this year against all three. NFC West teams they've played. Seattle, meanwhile, is 14 and three against the spread in their last 17 versus teams with a 500 or greater uh, record uh, in the NFC, but they're 0 and 1 in that spot this year. So, what do you guys think about this really good Sunday night football matchup? I told you there was a B play. Oh, so he's Seattle. got a mystery man Seattle number three. Seattle is the B play. Seattle, Mr. He must have gotten B. a plus three. Yeah. Okay. Plus Let's three. See. Down a little bit. Uh, I, I'm going back and forth in this game. I'd like to take uh, Green Bay. Uh, when you look at who Seattle has beaten in this streak, they won that uh, late game at the 49ers when 49ers still had some injuries. They beat the Cardinals twice, and then they beat the Jets. Uh, coming from behind, uh, as they did a week ago, uh, heading into this game. Uh, when I look at, um, uh, at at Green Bay and their schedule uh, recently, I, I look at the fact that uh, their losses lately uh, at the Lions, uh, they did beat Miami, previously beat the 49ers and the Bears, and they had lost to the Lions in between uh, uh, the, the Three winning, three game winning streaks sandwiched around losses to the Lions. So uh, the the fact that Seattle uh, has had that record against uh, uh, winning teams is a bit of a concern. But also take a look at the fact that uh, what you say, the Packers are three and zero against the NFC West this year, and I think that that tells you a lot about the mediocrity in the <laughs> NFC West when you look at uh, Seattle's record against teams outside uh, their uh, their division. I'm not quite sure what their record is, but uh, I know they have a couple of of, uh, of wins outside there. The Jets being one of them, for example. I think the price is short enough to go with with uh, Green Bay here. Not sure. Uh, I, I don't know that I would lay three, but at two and a half, I would certainly consider them. Oh, and by the way, Seattle would be another team uh, to uh, hook in that teaser. I think we may have mentioned that a little earlier when we touched upon this game before. Yes, we did. I think we did. Yeah. All right. Monday night, 
Uh, we've got a couple of snoozers, uh, Chicago at Minnesota and Atlanta at Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be watching Monday night football this, this Monday night. Uh, anyway, Chicago 12, one and one against the spread versus winning division opponents off a double digit win. And they're one Oh and one in that role this year. So that's a good role for Chicago. Meanwhile, uh, Minnesota, don't forget about that overtime win they had over the Bears just a few weeks ago. That was a crazy ending. It was the first time we saw a uh, onside kick attempt that came through. Bears got it to overtime, and then Caleb Williams decided to be Caleb Williams in overtime. And, and remember, and remember, they needed a touchdown and a two-point conversion to get to the overtime late in that game. So uh, Minnesota, heavy favorite. Meanwhile, Las Vegas is the dog here. They've lost nine straight. Atlanta 0-4, straight up ATS last four. Las Vegas is 2-14 against the spread at home versus losing NFC opponents and 0-1 in that role this year when they lost earlier this season to Carolina when Andy Dalton came in off the bench for the first time to relieve Bryce Young. Uh, in his first start of the season. And, of course, we know what happened a few weeks later. Bryce Young came back, and now he's playing super football. But uh, what do you guys think about and, these and Monday by, by night the way, games? That, that Raiders win, the Raiders lost to the Panthers came after they pulled off that very late comeback win in Baltimore. So what do you guys think about uh, either of these games uh, you think are worth taking? i got to think- figure out that there's there's got to be something better that I could do with my life. Then watch there might be some college basketball games on a Monday night. How, how about if I just watch a movie or go out with my wife? You could do that, Jim. Yeah. I mean, you could I mean, do that. There's got to be something better than to watch either. You could walk the game. dog. I, I, I will walk the dog. Yeah. Give a well, long you, you, could, you could usually you we could, do that in the morning. Yeah, you could well, watch one of Sunday's games with over a replay with your wife and surprise her by knowing every play that's going to happen at critical times. And she'll think you're a genius. And I, I think, I, I, I think we're going to oh, get let me ask you this at- question. Which dog do you trust the most to win the game gonna, outright? I'm Chicago gonna, well, or Las Vegas? I Las said Vegas. Raiders. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually like Chicago here. I expect a much better effort out of them you know, considering oh, the new coach good. last week. And, that's you know, good. I think I think they want to, uh, Thomas to uh, Thomas Brown to get the head coaching job. They played well won't. for him when he was the offense. Well, not if they have another repeat, but if they come out no. and win their last three, no. four games, no. he might. No, yeah. no, but, no, no, uh, no. Chicago is uh, giving that job to someone with a big name. Well, it won't be Belichick. We know that now. <laughs> that's true. Um, <laughs> at, Caleb I Williams. Hope- I hope I'm not sleeping through the Atlanta uh, uh, Vegas game because I'm going to be at that game. So I'd like to at least, uh, I may not be able to fall asleep. How many games do you get to a year? Uh, This will be it this year. Oh, first game. First game, yeah. Did you go to Um, any college games? uh, Not this year, no. No. I I enjoy both. Uh, I don't enjoy going to games as much as I used to because of everything you have to put up with to get there and, and leave. But um, what's the what's the quarterback situation for the Raiders, Andy? I think uh, Ritter's going to uh, start again. Um, okay. Yeah, is I O'Connell out for the year? I I don't know. He's officially been ruled out, but I know he's out for this game. Yeah. Um, and um, did, did didn't he play for Atlanta before? So maybe yes. I, I Bingo. Think yeah. So yeah, well, I don't know who has the. Uh, I'm going to yeah. give it to my old former team. Yeah, I, well, either that or they know his tendencies, which is why he, why why Atlanta yeah, is his well. former team. Uh, I really, I, I just, I can't lay points with Atlanta. Uh, it may be an entertaining game here, given the fact that uh, uh, both teams have struggled, Raiders especially on defense. So maybe I look over the total, but then I take a look at, at these t- teams. Uh, Atlanta's turned it over 20 times. That's 26 in the league. And who's last in the league? The Raiders with 20, 25 turnovers. And neither defense excuse me, is averaging even one turnover force per game. So uh, we might may, – may, I'm almost making a case for the under because I'm almost suggesting that some of these drives, because they have a tendency to turn over, how long do we go before we see one of those turnovers? Maybe after a team gains 60 yards and the turnover finally – How long, be, how long do we go game. before Cousins goes on the bench and they bring the kid in? I'm I keep wondering that, yeah. Already. Yeah. And I think uh, Morris uh, still is committed to uh, Cousins. I, I think they have to stay with him as long as they are in playoff contention because of the experience. I don't know that you want to throw Penix into his first action playing a game that is much more meaningful in week 15 or 14, or 15 or 16 than it would be if they put him in, in, game, in weeks three or four. 
Well, well it's not a good sign. It's not a good but sign. I, but I would, make, I would make the choice to put him in there and say, this team needs a spark considering about their recent play. Right. You, you know, would, one thing is, that has changed with them in the last two weeks, They, I mean, they went through the whole year without being able to get any pressure on quarterbacks. Yeah, but the I last two that. weeks they've sacks. been able to get – They've been get they've gotten sacks the last two games. Yeah. They they did make a change on defense to do that. Yeah, yeah. well, they had the bye, so that probably gave them the time. They and they're to going against changes. the familiar. And they're going against the familiar quarterback. So we may say a three. We may see that three straight times from uh, Atlanta. All right, mm-hmm. so there you go. Uh, it's that's not. Gonna... It's not. It's not a game I'll be betting because I will have a rooting interest, but I'm not sure if I want to root for the Raiders to win or for the Raiders to hold on to that number one draft choice. Yeah, I mean uh, that's uh, again. I think everybody. It's a. It's it's the worst kept secret uh, in town that it looks like if the Raiders are number one pick, they're going to go with Sanders. And to tell you the truth, um, I'm not so sure any other team would pick Sanders in the top three anyway. So as long as the Raiders yeah. were one of those top three picks, they're probably going to get him. So I'm not sure if he's going to work out, but uh, again, would you, what uh, would you consider Hunter because of also the need for a, a wide receiver? Well, I would consider him, but the problem is, I mean, just saying that he just yeah. seems to have this infatuation about the kid, Sanders. Yeah. And he need a quarterback. Hey, maybe so, Dion's the coach here next year. Maybe Dion is the coach here next year. That is a definite possibility yeah. because we know Pierce ain't going to be. So, all right. Well, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. So that's going to wrap it up. And by the way, Andy wanted to know, uh, because we had uh, just the three of us, he was wondering if there oh. wasn't going to be enough time. He's, he's wondering the show's going to be real fast. Well, this is the longest show longest we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it, it's been over two hours and 10 minutes. And uh, uh, that's going to wrap it up. So next week, when Mark returns uh, and everybody else returns, we're going to uh, start the show with our playoff preview. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Even Jim is going to have input on. You're going to talk about the college, games, football, college football playoff. College playoff football preview, playoff yeah. preview. preview. That's going to be on the show next week. Uh, don't forget to tune in though on well, Friday. I already gave you. I already gave you a play. That's I mean, right. Clemson to win straight up. Okay, Mister uh, D, I guess will be on that one. We haven't mentioned him. Yeah, yet. you can hold off that that one because uh, they won't play before we're on the air again next week. That's right. Uh, and then, well, you got to give us your championship pick next week, Jim. Yeah. Can oh, you do I that? To, I, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that one. Okay, so take a look at the futures. We'll have future plays, but don't forget also to tune in on Friday because Jim and uh, I uh, will return with Mark Lawrence, just like we did last Friday. So maybe we'll have some time to talk about a few other things uh, in college football, NFL, of course. Uh, so, and then Jim will have Army, his, Army, his, Army Navy. Yeah. I don't know. You can talk about uh, that Jackson then, state, South Carolina state for yeah, yeah, the SWAC uh, title. Uh, so, um, and then Jim will be back to give his uh, final thoughts on the week. Uh, that is going to be available. When do you, that's available at Thursday I do that, I do that on I do that on Saturday because I get the final injury reports yeah. on Friday. And Jim and I will be doing our Saturday uh, NFL uh, coverage as well uh, for the same reason. When, when when will that be posted? Saturday night? Evening? No, that'll be posted Saturday afternoon. Okay. And um, I think I do on, that around 10 o'clock in the morning. And that's yeah. on the YouTube channel, Our, our right? video. Is that on oh, the yeah. YouTube? Everything is here at ProLine okay. TV. That's okay. the only place Great. you can find it. And uh, that's why you need to subscribe. And also, uh, again, check out for uh, not only uh, these videos coming up, uh, but uh, we're going to have our horse racing show on Friday. So we're going to have more picks this week. I don't know where we're doing races. Maybe Gulfstream Park might be some of the races we're going to take care of on Friday. Uh, but uh, enjoy uh, the week and the rest of the week in the NFL and college football. And then we'll have everybody back next week. So guys, appreciate it as always. It was fun. It's always fun. Absolutely Andy, fun. thank you. And, and and they're on their own for the uh, salute to veterans uh, bowl game that we have this Saturday to start kick things off. The salute to the veterans bowl game. I think that used to be called the Camellia Bowl. It's in okay. Montgomery, Alabama. South Alabama, South Alabama, and Alabama and Western, and Western Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. Okay. So and then, uh, and then we have a couple of midweek games uh, next week. I think Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday we have uh, a total, of, including UNLV next Wednesday. Is Odom, we have- Odom's gone, right? We we do have to start yeah. thinking about basketball. Yeah, that's uh, January. I mean, that is that is out yep. there. We'll you be know, talking college hoops here 
in January, and that'll be for three uh, three months plus into uh, the Final Four starting in January. So check us out here, of course, for that. Uh, and I know Andy's going to be talking a lot of college basketball too. So will Tony Mejia. So uh, we're going to have uh, – so Jim, you and I uh, won't be the only ones doing videos here on the channel uh, much longer. Uh, we're going to get Andy and Tony to start uh, chipping in. Uh, in uh, and, and also maybe update everybody with what's going on because there's some activity in Major League Baseball with signings and things of that nature. Oh, my so, God. The money they're spending yeah. for these players. I heard, I heard today Crochet is going to the Red Sox. Max Fried now is with the Yankees. Yeah. Soto, of course, is with the Mets. And they so still we'll, think they have money to get Pete Alonso back, which would be you had Judge Soto with the uh, Yankees. Now you would have Alonso Soto with the uh, – but that, uh, that owner, that owner for the Mets is really, he really wants to win. He yeah. Oh, not yeah. Fooling, he's not fooling around. It's and he, and he's, a, he's in a tough division with Atlanta and the Phillies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you got to spend money. There's no salary cap. You got a luxury tax. Yeah, boo-hoo. So, uh, to him, the luxury tax is what you uh, tip a bellman or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so that is going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Okay, guys.